Hello everyone and hey. welcome to a little collab we got here. We have Chris Steniger of Steniger Hello. Arts on board. You may know him from the Search of Hannibal or perhaps the Spirit of Yule. And yes. uh, yeah, so how are you doing today? <laughs> good. I'm doing good. I'm doing just fine. It's a blizzard outside, but I stomped through the snow and made it here. So, nice. Uh, but very good. <laughs> Snow's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're good. No we're snow good. over here, but yeah. oh. there is a, a blazing heat. Yeah. There you go. We got the weather out of the way. So right. that's kind of the default thing where mm -hmm. I am. You have to talk about the weather. So you got that out of the way. So, right. okay. Awesome yeah, goody. Good <laughs> so you're an artist. You have your own YouTube channel dedicated to your art. Uh, I, I am kind of curious. How did you get into doing comic books? Like, what, oh, what would you say is, like, the turning point that led you into doing this as a, a career, I guess? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I guess. Um, well, yeah, I've always, okay, I've always loved comics. I grew up reading comics. I was a huge comic kid growing up. Uh, but I kind of got sucked into animation when I sort of got out of high school and all that kind of stuff because I needed a job. I needed to actually pay some bills. Although I, I, I did want to draw comics. I did at one point in time when I was like 15, I made a portfolio to go to the San Diego Comic-Con uh, talent search. I was going to go. I wanted to be like be an inker at least or something. Anyhow, uh, I got sidetracked into animation and then kind of later games. And But I always wanted to kind of do comics. So it was sort of always lingering out there as this thing that I wanted to tap into. But it's so time consuming and at the same time i need to pay rent and live and all this other stuff so it was always this finding the time and the balance between uh gigs basically where i could like chip away and, and get into comics and um basically uh i worked on a bunch of really bad indie stuff that was never really satisfying and kind of frustrating and uh, was kind of pointless. And I thought that it might lead to something, but then again, it was like the work wasn't very good. And yeah, it was kind of a waste of time. So then I thought, well, I can self publish. And then I sort of got into like web comic people hmm. and it's probably around 2008 or so. And uh, I started a web comic actually, which I really should have continued. That's like a huge regret. I started a web comic called dead heaven. Uh, oh. And it built up like a reasonably decent audience. It was a, it was a fantasy epic thing. I bit off way oh, more than I That sounds like do. my thing, yeah. Sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> Dark fantasy. I, like I was living in Europe at the time and I was surrounded by castles and stuff. And it's like, okay, I'm going to package all this, throw in some horror. And then with my terrible writing, I'm going to attempt to tell a terrible story. <laughs> but it'll look cool, right? And so. I, I built that up a bit and then I didn't do Kickstarters or anything, but I did like pre-orders and then mm -hmm. I was able to get like a couple books out oh, nice. doing that in kind of that um, European size format. And then, yeah, life got in the way and I just sort of, um, yeah, started ha like working on games again and this kind of thing. And then, but always wanted to do comics. And so I did a Kickstarter, um, not for Hannibal. Uh, I did one that came out on time. <laughs> on time hey. uh, there you go. probably like 2013 or something uh called i don't have it on me um called moto and present if you go to my website on the thingy you can go check it out and uh so we did that it was successful uh came out on time just like that like a pro on time i stress less than time. seven years <laughs> stop it yeah 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 i mean more it's like yeah it, yeah <laughs> came out on time so that was my, my first experience with kickstarter was great because it's like oh you do this thing people support it yeah and you can book at the end of it great and it, it was an awesome experience and then we ended up selling the uh the soft cover rights to a, a publisher and then they they put out the soft cover version so it kind of existed in two ways which was cool and uh yeah and then i kind of I still wanted to, somewhere in there, I did go back to San Diego, I think in like 2009. And I did get chosen for the talent search at DC. Oh. They did they did see my portfolio and I met with an editor uh, named Bob Shrek, who um, I think he, well, he did some stuff with Frank Miller and that. Anyway, I met with him, but it was right as he was exiting 
DC and mm. going to do this thing with Legendary or whatever. So we kept in touch a bit. At one point, I was almost going to work on Jurassic Park for IDW. I'm glad I didn't because my work would have been awful. So they made the right <laughs> choice by not going with me. But um, yeah, so I've always been like kind of close to comics, but not mm. doing it right. properly. Because, uh, really, the money is is a big issue and uh i mean i love it i absolutely love comics but it's just such a tricky thing for consistency and that's why now it's kind of so exciting with self-publishing yeah. although i should say as i totally suck up all the air in the room and talk too much um i also i do have a comic coming out in september that's right uh, it should be everywhere um it's a it's a big beefy 200 page or well, 210 page uh graphic oh, wow. novel um called Silverwing, which is based on the Silverwing uh, novel series, if you're familiar with that, with Kenneth Oppel. <laughs> so that's coming out in September, and it'll be in everywhere. It's with um, cool. HarperCollins and all those people. So it's going to be all over the place. And, and you, uh, so that's pretty cool. And you said that so, was YA? Yeah. Have you taken yeah. any inspiration <laughs> from the DC YA uh, series? <laughs> uh, it's good YA. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so you're branching off from the bad. <laughs> Yeah, one of the things that really appealed me about it was it. Well, basically, the the Kickstarter you alluded to with uh, Hannibal <laughs> was uh, really delayed, and I think um, it's just one of those projects that kind of didn't go sideways, but uh, required more time in pre-production and writing than expected. Yeah, I had a question about that because I was I was trying to write like a pirate thing, and I. I was looking for information and there's like just not enough. And so I was like kind of looking around the internet and I, I ended up emailing Lindy Beige and then he oh, yeah. emailed me back like so quickly. I thought it was a auto rejection thing with like a ton of really useful information. I was like stunned. I couldn't believe that like someone would actually respond. Like he's like this big famous man. Right. And then, uh, and then I emailed him back and he emailed me again. And I was just, you know, I was like shocked that he was so quick. And so yeah. I suspected, I, I've, I've suspected that you might've had that similar reaction. And so uh, exactly similar, in, <laughs> similar interaction. Yeah. And then you were like, oh, this guy's going to get that script done like that. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> I, I knew I it. Used, um, I knew it. <laughs> I used to, yes, exactly what happened. I used to work at a, well, anyway, I used to work at a bookstore. And uh, so, um, I, I got into reading about Hannibal and I thought, oh my God, this is a great story. Like the, the, the characters here are, are perfect. Like this is so like, why isn't this a movie? Um, I don't know. Like this, it, it's just such a great story that's begging mm -hmm. to be kind of told. And so it's always been lingering in the back of my head for like forever, like a decade. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to start chipping away at it. I was living overseas and I thought that I should really dig deeper into this and maybe, you know, just start tinkering with it. And so I thought like, but I need somebody who knows way more about this than me. I'm not that guy. I need resources, this kind of thing. And so I did what you did. I wrote <laughs> Lindy Beige. I was like, Hey man, I, I, I'm into this Hannibal guy and I kind of want to do a comic, you know, would you like, would there be any way that you could be like, that you could kind of be a consultant for me or something that you could help me sort of navigate this a little bit and, and tell me when i get out of bounds or, or whatever i mean i still want it to be a comic it's not you know i still want it to be fun but uh and so we started talking back and forth and all this stuff and i was like i just thought about it more and more and i'm like you know this guy like he's a good he he's probably a really good storyteller instead of doing getting so lost in the weeds with this back and forth thing wouldn't it make sense just to like like, how about if you just write it? Like, that would be cool. And uh, and then he's like, yeah, okay. And it's like, okay, cool. And then it was like, uh, well, let's do a let's let's do a Kickstarter or something because I had just come off of a, a successful Kickstarter that went really well. Everybody was happy. Like, let's do that. And then okay, it's like, yeah, it'll take me a couple years to draw it. Yeah, let's do it. You know, and and then it just um, yeah, it it was a, a different kind of thing and. It, it just, it, it's kind of this weird mix of like uh, two people kind of from two different worlds, you know, in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, he does have like this like really monumental hard job of writing this script, mm -hmm. you know? And I think also too, like thinking about the pressure that's probably on him, 
there's probably a lot of eyeballs on them. Right. Because if you if you do like a if you have a YouTube channel where you kind of go yeah and you look for stuff that's wrong with things, like, right. You're, right? You've kind of now got an army of people that are going to do exactly that to you. Yeah. And so there's a lot of that sort of yeah, micro he's... type stuff, I think. And I I I suspect that that's part of the the thing. It also makes doing the art a little more difficult too, yeah. because there's like. Yeah, so it's, I, I mean, it's good. It will be good when it's yeah. done. It's going to eventually get finished. But yeah, horribly delayed. I mean, whoever's watching this that's, that, that backed it, thank you. I and backed it. I, I, uh, I, totally, yeah. I totally apologize. And uh, I, I can just, all, I'm, all I can say is I'm trying to make it good so mm-hmm. that you're not let down. So I believe yeah. it, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm at sorry. some point it gets kind of humorous <laughs> that, it, yeah. that it took so long. But, you know. <sighs> yeah, I, I mean, I... I'm smiling, but in, inside it, like I've had, uh, oh, like it's, it's been really, uh, damaging, like as a, like life wise. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I, how can I make decisions as far as even where to live, where to work, what to right. work on? Cause I, mean, I've got, I noticed like, you, you haven't, like, you haven't done another Kickstarter since that one. No, I, I mean, right. I feel so bad doing yeah. it. Like, how can I? I, like, I, I'd love to, but how can I do that knowing that mm-hmm. I haven't like done this? So yeah, that's, right. that's the other thing right. too. It's also like hamstrung me. Yeah. The I, stuff. So it's, yeah, I, I feel, yeah. I feel bad. I, I felt bad that you're kind of like trapped like that. I, I tell it to, to Trisha as like a horror story. Like imagine, like uh, imagine you're waiting on like, cause I've, I've worked with other people on projects and like, you know, I, I worked with a friend on a project and after like a year, he didn't deliver anything. And I was like, we got to just, you know, but we didn't have like, you know, tons of backers and stuff waiting for yeah. the thing. So it was like, not a, yeah, not, not a big thing, but it's like, it's kind of a funny horror story, but like yeah. when I think about it, I, I get anxious just thinking about myself in that position as either oh. side, either, either one of you, it's like, cause you're kind of shackled to the project until you get it done. You don't have like the trust of backers that you can deliver a project because if they exactly. back that one, yeah. so it's like, and such the other a, one that I, the other one that I did was like with somebody else uh, hmm. and that like it was under their name kind of thing. And so, and then the uh, yeah. previous um, time when I took back orders, like say when I was doing my web comic thing that I printed, uh, the books were already done. I was like, Hey, I'm like, I had a mailing list. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. done. I'm going to print. I just kind of need numbers. Like who right. wants one so that I know yeah. what the print run's going to be. That's definitely the direction a lot of people have been taking yeah. with these yeah. like campaigns, making sure like most of it is done beforehand so that yeah. these crazy delays don't happen. Right. But yeah. that also requires a bit of an investment on your part. So right. it kind of like some people say it deflates the whole purpose behind a Kickstarter in the first place. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's tricky because I'm I'm extremely happy with the work that uh, Lloyd's done, that, that Lindy Beige has done on the, um, I call him Lloyd. Uh, yeah. His first name is Nicholas, but I always call him Lloyd. But I guess he's <laughs> Lindy Beige. He's one of those things. Um, I, I, I love the work that he's done. He's done a really good job and the script is really good. Um, but it's just like, it's also this insane beast of a project where it's right. like, they're not pages that I can bang out one a day. It's like one a week. And and then it's also much longer than, uh, it was supposed to be like 150 pages roughly. And it's like way over 200 now. Right. So it's also like increased in length and time and everything. Yeah. and that means cost and and yeah this is where my heart starts to race because uh paper has gone up a lot since we, we did it oh yeah yeah, and, yeah oh dear god and thank god i'm i'm like actually somehow an organized human and all of that's safe like yeah but but it's been tough and that's why i picked up the silverwing project because i got to the point where it's like i i have to do something mm-hmm. it's literally like it's yeah. i want to do something and so um i got contacted by the well by the publisher and the writer and stuff and they were like hey do you want to do this and it was right when uh the thing uh can you say it anymore can you say the cough cough a chew yeah I'm dying. <laughs> well, i don't know can you uh i think you can say it now okay but yeah that, well i don't want to like damn the you know <laughs> channel uh, when that thing kicked <laughs> off there was all this talk about bats and bat soup and there's all these memes i don't know if you remember that yeah yeah, yeah i do yeah <laughs> So right at that time, I get contacted by the publisher and they're like, we got a story about bats. And I was like, this is perfect. It kind of makes sense. So um, 
Your I SEO is going to be that. great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I did that book while waiting for the script. And and I, I, I did it early. I delivered it early. It, actually, I finished it like eight months ago, and it's not even coming out until September. So oh, like, is Silverwing yeah. the, the kid's book with the bat? Yeah. I have that yeah. somewhere. I just it just occurred to me. It just occurred to me. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had that as yeah. a kid. I have that somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's I know good. And, and it was great. Like the writer, it, w- it was amazing too, because it was like uh, hey, we got this thing for you. Here's a script. It's done. Oh wow. And, and That's the writer amazing. like they were just like, take it and do whatever you want. And Perfect. it was like, wow, double awesome. I can just do whatever yeah. I want. There's no over the shoulder stuff. I can just make like make it for what what I think is good for better mm-hmm. or worse. Yeah. You know, so they were uh, delightful to work with. And yeah, it, yeah I'm pretty I, uh, stoked. About I, I should say I'm like a huge uh, Lindy Beige fan, but I still find it hilarious that he's taken like seven years to get a script done. <laughs> it could well, be worse. It, it could. It could be worse. It he could, could have ended it on a to be continued. <laughs> Wait seven years for yeah. the next book. But yeah, no. Like I, I, I made my YouTube uh, account, like my first YouTube account, because I wanted to like his videos. Because I was like, oh, these are so good, and I feel bad I'm not liking them. So I made an account so I could like them. And then for oh, the longest cool. time, I just had him as the person I was subscribed to. So I'm a big fan, but I still find it. I, I still like laugh pretty hard when I think about like he did an update video. And he's like, some would describe my 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 pace as glacial. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. And and uh, like at, uh, at around that time was the point where when he like it, it was. Uh, yeah, I, I, like the, the idea of um, it's like that sounds funny what you just said and it's like and i just want to put my head through a wall you know what i mean it's, like, it's so unfunny in my world you know and uh it's like like luckily um when i weigh the i guess it i he did finish about a year ago to be fair so uh mm-hmm. maybe six years just to be, to be totally fair but yeah i mean i i want to say uh it's worth it and it has been worth it um i think the big thing that like part of the takeaway from him, like after the success of the Kickstarter was, it was a real shock to me just at how powerful YouTube was. Mm. And I had no idea that it was that, like obviously yeah. I watch YouTube and stuff, but I had no idea that like it could translate into that level of something tangible. And uh, it really blew my mind. And that's when I was like, I got to somehow, I don't know how, because I don't know what content to make, but I somehow have to like, dip my toe into this world yeah and and somehow try to navigate it because it's extremely uh powerful you know yeah, yeah. so youtube probably yeah. is like one of the best if not the best place on the internet to advertise your stuff yeah not only because yeah, like there's so many people on youtube but you also get like that personal connection whereas like just a you know just an ad banner it doesn't quite give you that mm. yeah yeah, for sure. I mean, I really miss the days. I don't know if you remember this or not, um, or if you were, no, you were old enough. Like maybe I'm showing my age. Back in the day, back in like 2008-ish, when I was doing the web comic thing, there was something called uh, Project Wonderful. Mm. And it was this really great bidding advertising thing where all the web, all these web comics were grouped together in this yeah. gigantic network of advertising. Oh, okay. And you could like bid and you could like put a banner on somebody's, webcomic for like 25 cents a day and it was so slick and it was so easy to build up an audience to see your stuff because you could find like-minded um uh comics and then they could share and you could swap links you know all this kind of old school stuff but it really felt like there was a cool community of webcomic people back then and I, I don't know. I don't know if that exists anymore with like Webtoon or this kind of other stuff. Definitely I don't know. Definitely not it's... with Webtoon. Webtoon does not. Yeah. <laughs> they you can like pay for uh, a banner on like their homepage, I think. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, the monetization stuff and yeah, it's so tricky. It's like I'm I'm sort of obsessed with it. Like this whole idea of like how do you how do you uh, make a living creatively like Mm. it's such a weird it's such a weird thing i'm I'm completely obsessed with it like i've been in youtube school now for about the past six months i just spend most of my day listening to like youtube guys talking to you about like yo here's how you make cool shorts you know just smash that like button (laughs) there's a 
big, great community of comic people on YouTube. So you got a lot to pick from, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just, I really got into like cartoonist kayfabe recently. I don't know if you know who those guys are. Um, they're they're really, they're like, you. they're like um, a couple of older guys and they basically just do deep dives into like, um, more like American comics, I, I guess. And uh, it's good, it's really good. But I've like recently, I've become obsessed with uh, manga. Like mm -hmm. I've, I, I dipped off. Like when I was a kid, when I was younger, I got into like Akira and uh, Ninja Scroll and Devil Man and, and this yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. And then I sort of dropped off and but yeah, now I'm kind of getting back into it, and I'm I'm just obsessed with you're, like man. you're like a testimony to what uh, Trish has been saying that like uh, American comics are way down and Japanese comics are still good quality. It's, it's like yeah, yeah. It's like whenever I'm in a, a bookstore, uh, yeah, I, I I'm the weird dude who's asking the kid like, <laughs> hey, what you reading? And they they all like they point me to manga and they say this is cool, read this, and. Uh, yeah, and then I walk away with a ton of books. Nobody ever takes me to the young adult uh, American section and says, yeah. read this. They're because not it's interested. All, it's all trash. And yeah. you Two know, are not interested in grandma's politics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, they don't really care. In a lot of ways, manga has like filled that void that people have for like good comics. And yeah. I love that, but at the same time, I'm a little bit jealous of that mm -hmm. <laughs> because like being in indie comics, you want to start pushing your stuff as well, but people, yeah. uh, you know, American, they still see it as American comics and they see it as equivalent to all of this other crappy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. It's like the, the level of, um, I mean, it's always been a bit of an outsider thing, it just because it's a book and then you're combining cartoons and stuff on top of it. So it's like a book with what? <laughs> like, so it's a double whammy of like weird subculture. And yeah, we have a really odd relationship with it like i mean it's like i remember going to a um like i went to a couple when i was self-publishing in uh germany i went to a couple conventions there and i i made this isn't being braggadocious or anything but i made so much freaking money i couldn't believe it like in a weekend it was like i it was just like i can't believe that this is a way like this is a thing you can really make a living doing this and it was like that's awesome self-publishing self with uh just a, a fantasy book and it was crazy and um germans also then, love fantasy too yeah <laughs> of course. like sure. look at like how yeah. popular power metal is over there like just stick some fantasy into their metal and they're like <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's like ah. Uh, yeah totally it's like you have these families and they're all wearing like septic flesh t-shirts you, know? <laughs> you know it's that kind of thing <laughs> like it's uh but yeah it, it was so crazy and then i would go to a comic convention say in niagara falls right uh in ontario there and um i'd walk away like not really breaking even mm -hmm. or, or barely after all the expenses and stuff and just a big waste of time the people aren't the people are there because they like Deadpool. They're not there because they like comics, mm. which is a huge thing. Like there's a big difference between people that like uh, a character and are obsessed about it versus people who like an art form. Like there's a massive difference there. The people who like the character are not gonna buy your stuff because they see they see that like your thing and they're like, stranger danger, I'm afraid, mm. you know, I, I, it's not safe. You know, and then whereas if they're into an art form, they'll just try it out because they just dig, dig comics, you know? So there's it's a big difference in the mindset, I think. I don't know what it's like where you are, but that's what I found kind of in Canada. Uh, I don't know. I've had a lot of people go like, you called them wine moms where they're like, uh, they pick up the book and like, they're like tempted. like, And then they're like, you should talk to Hallmark and they put it back down you and they talk leave. To Netflix. Like you shouldn't have it made into a Hallmark movie and then I'll watch it. And it's like, <laughs> it's right <Okay>. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I was at like a, a chapter. Do you guys have Indigo in, in the States or is it ch chapters? Um, um, bookstores. Uh, well, maybe bookstores. Neither. I, neither. You know what? I think, I don't think we have Sorry. like the store in the States. I've, I've seen like the website or, 
Oh, okay. Our, our big box version, I guess, of maybe a Barnes and Noble um, is, yep. is called Adapters. And uh, basically it's just two, there's, well, there's one book company in all the country because we read, yeah, uh, we don't. Anyway, Canadians are, yeah, not really big readers. But anyway, um, I was at this bookstore recently and I was doing, I was hanging out in the manga section and there was this like, uh, there was this kid who was maybe nine and then the mom was there and the mom was in like full hijab and all this stuff. And uh, the kid was like going through comics and he was like, I think it was like, it was Chainsaw Man. Oh. He pulls out, chain, pulls out Chainsaw Man. And he's like, this, this. And he's like, I want this. <laughs> and then the, the, the mom is like, why you read? Why you read this garbage? <laughs> And and it was so funny, and it's because she looked over at me and she was like, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but why are you read?" Because I was looking at it too, right? And um, anyway, I was like, "I was like, don't worry, it's a stepping stone. It's like today it's Chainsaw Man, and then tomorrow it's like this, mm-hmm. and then it's somewhere is Ulysses, you know. But yeah. uh, maybe not. But you know." Um, there is a crazy think... amount of like youth reading manga that's like not quite for their age group. Like you yeah. were mentioning, they had Attack kids. on Titan in like the kids section in like this one library I was working on, uh, working at, and it was like. You you were mentioning mm. like one one of the kids oh. in your D and D group oh watched Goblin Slayer. What a nightmare! And literally what all an... I can think is of the rape scene in the first what a episode. Ni- what a what an actual absolute nightmare! I was I was like running D and D for a group, and then I. I don't know. I like mentioned that there was going to be uh, that there was like a group of goblins or something. And then one of the kids like mentions Goblin Slayer. And I was like, I I am the responsible adult in this group. You have not seen that. Don't talk about it. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, no, it's like it, that was that was almost. It's a bit intense. That, it was, it was, that anime. It was almost as bad as like I was doing a birthday party and one of the kids was like, did the did the goblin leave a body? And I was like, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, I guess. And they're like, okay, I want a teabag. And I was like, no, oh no. <laughs> I was like, don't talk. This is quiet. I, d- I did see one um, and it was in the kids section too. Yeah, like it was, um, I mean, it was, I think it was shrink wrap. So you technically couldn't open it, but it had something, um, it was, it looked like dudes who are having, uh, who are, I'll try and keep it clean, but smiling. it was dudes that were, <laughs> smiling at each other. Oh, well, they were, okay. they were warriors and their oh. weapons were, uh, their wieners. And oh, their wieners oh no. these, and it was like, Oh, okay. Hey kids. Hey kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think it was, yeah. So that I, there's definitely, what was the one that I saw the other day? It was like toilet bound something. Oh, toilet bound Hanako kun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I love the I names. I, I saw this, um, Another one, it was like called I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, how can you resist stuff with titles like that? Right. Like, uh, where is it? I do, I, romance I, I, I do worry about like librarians and like uh, people working at bookstores like intentionally putting that stuff. A rooster fighter? <laughs> what? Like rooster fighter? I mean, I don't like it's crazy. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. We, I do worry about that because like a, a couple times like we've had like a. Uh, We've got uh, Ellie the Eliminator over here. Uh, uh, Trisha's like a uh, kids comic, and like parents have been like, "There's no sex in this, right?" And it's like, "Whoa, <laughs> what have what have what have you found?" It's like, "Oh yeah, the librarian just you know recommended some book to my uh, my granddaughter," and I. It's like yeah, and she, and, and she, she's like, just to clarify, she's seven, and it's like this is appropriate for seven year olds. I was like, yeah, I think <laughs> it's like there's no sex scenes in it. It's also one of the many reasons why I prefer when in a bookstore they don't shrink wrap it so that you can flip through it and see yeah. what the heck yeah. you're getting into. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. There, there's definitely uh, like that kind of that sort of shocked me a little bit when I when I saw that mm-hmm. I was like, whoa, this is like once upon a time, like when I was younger, this would have been uh, like at the top of the sh- like the, mm-hmm. the unreachable part of the shelf, you know, right. like it wouldn't have been sitting there at kid level it would be up here right. shrink up next to the like the adult magazines you know because it's adult material and i think that's the thing like some stuff is for adults yeah and yeah. i i don't know why that's a bad thing you know like yeah. there, there, there should be distinctions like i would want 
uh, a barrier. <laughs> yeah, know, like, I, that's not unreasonable to ask. I was, I was yeah, working. Yeah, it's totally normal. Like, you're I, not ready for it. Yeah, I was, I was working at a like a, a fair one time, and like someone's like granddaughter was helping them, and then she was, she was telling me that she watched like a show that's supposed to be like how she described it was supposed to be progressive or whatever. And then there yeah. was like a, there was a, there was a sex scene, a very, a very uh, uncensored sex scene. And she was very uncomfortable about it. And I was like, you don't say, Oh man, that's, uh, you know, not, you tell your parents about that. You like, you shouldn't, that's yeah. Yeah. She was like, yeah, she was like, it's very not appropriate. And I was like, yeah, it doesn't sound appropriate. <laughs> I think it's the same thing too with like when, when I was, I, I watched like the exorcist, I had, kind of the people uh, down the road in the, the farm next to us uh, were like, I was nine and I think she was like 16, but it was like, that's as good as it's gonna get for like neighborhood friends, you know, it was right. only one. And uh, so I remember going over to her place and watching um, like horror movies mm. and I was way too young and I watched right. like The Exorcist and uh, like Freddy Krueger movies and it screwed me up for like a really <laughs> long time. Like I had nightmares, like you wouldn't believe. And like, I had this weird, like fear of, of Satan for a while, <laughs> like as a kid. My like, kids, like kids. <laughs> it was just nuts. It was like, I, but it like burned into my brain. It's kind of like the, the, the underwear section in the Sears catalog. I don't know. You probably don't know what that is. It, I'll, I've heard the, like it. ancient standup routines about it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's a real thing. And to this day, I have like a very specific type that I can't help but be attracted to <laughs> because of that imprinting. Right. So, I mean, it is real and it does mm -hmm. imprint on you. So what if you imprint weird stuff? on? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess they call like, it grooming, right? Yeah, well, yeah. 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 when it's like, purposefully it, done yeah. yeah and maybe you mix that with a bit of like weird cartoon stuff and you end mm -hmm. up with furries i don't know <laughs> yeah i mean I've, <laughs> I've definitely watched uh certain anime that was meant for adults when i was like way too young for it and i didn't even really quite understand what i was watching <laughs> parents got a pre-screen stuff like yeah. they, they have to understand what they're like looking at like uh when oh, when parents oh. are like afraid of everything it's not it's not good but when parents just like don't gate anything it's Ooh, you know they should at least be informed about like yeah. what their kids are taking in right yeah for sure i mean my i i didn't grow up in a, a, a religious household or mm -hmm. anything like that and i mean my parents are pretty cool and basically whatever books we had around were the stuff that they had so you're mm -hmm. ended, you end up reading kind of what was around in the house and that kind of thing and like movies like if if uh we were renting a vcr like that's how old i am it like rent a vcr I, I, we, I rented vcrs i went to blockbuster I know, I, yeah, there you go yeah it's like that stuff like you rent a vcr and then like dad would bring home a couple movies and it would be like okay you're watching um you know this dark crystal thing and something mm. about a robot you know here's your movies for the weekend you know and but i guess now it's like you've got all this other like when i think about how innocent and sheltered that is it's just Mm. like so radically different from now where you've got this fire hose of content that i don't know i don't know what it does i don't know i also think that if you watch or if you consume less junk and you like let's say you only have 10 books and 10 movies in your entire childhood you're gonna really absorb that and meditate on it mm -hmm. like if, if, yeah. if you've just got a handful of of cartoons or something if you like for me it's like okay i got beauty and the beast i got watership down i got you know dark crystal i got labyrinth you know i've got like 10 movies you know something with richard Pryor maybe and european vacation you know it's like though that's my entire movie collection for my childhood and you're just gonna watch them forever i, I watched nothing. like sleeping beauty like a hundred times <laughs> yeah and it's great yeah. yeah so i don't know i don't know what that does creatively like, well, you guys are creative. Mm -hmm. So like what, like with your Kickstarter that you're doing right now, that everybody should go back. <laughs> uh, what, what's the, uh, what are the threads that you kind of pulled on to get that, that going? Like, what was the inspiration? I, I try to not say inspiration, but I want to right. say. Um, it was definitely cooking for a while. A yeah. lot of like concepts going back and forth. I, I have never in all my like, 
I guess you know that kind of leads into like a question I, I had actually. Um, I've never had a di had any difficulty with creativity. I've always um, just been able to like. I've I've heard people say that you can't turn it on. You have to let it come to you. But I I can. I can just like be creative about stuff. Like uh, you know, it, I I've never had an issue with that. But I have had issues with my creative process. Uh, editing mm -hmm. is kind of slow. Uh, productivity is 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 not the the stocks and productivity are down. So so there's <laughs> there's um there's a there, the there's a book a, a famous book Eat Pray Love, and the author. Oh, yeah. She, she wrote that and then she wrote nothing else, right? Yeah. And then she did a TED talk and she wrote a, a, a book about creativity um, in, in which she explains that creativity comes from literal fairies that will visit you. And the, the book yeah. is an instructional on how to get the fairies to visit you. Now, oh, no. I'm down, down by the way, sold. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So, to me, that sounds like someone who's having some difficulties with being creative, since she's only written Re "Eat, Pray, Love" and hasn't like produced another bestseller, and she's making excuses. She's talking about fairies, right? That's what it sounds like to me. Call me a skeptic on the whole fairy theory. Um, so, I don't need creativity fairies. I, I have, I, I am a creativity fairy apparently, um, because uh, yeah. I, I need no visits from creativity fairies. However, productivity fairy, I'm listening. Right? right yeah <laughs> so yeah. my question to you is well first of all i guess what's your take on the the idea of cre creativity fairies um and then <laughs> second if if you could have any type of fairy visit you and imbue you with something like creativity productivity um an editing fairy that just comes in and edits for you maybe an inking fairy oh. that just <laughs> does your inking for you what kind of fairy would you like to, to visit upon you like what oh, what part wow. of your creative process do you you feel like you need mythological help. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, man. Well, this is a, a bad answer, but I'd say the time fairy because I, okay. my biggest problem is I want to do more than I have time for. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I have so many projects and so many ideas that I want to do, but I don't have the time to do it. But that's also a cheap answer. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but yeah, it would be time so I can do more. You can but have a time fairy. Up, yeah, quickness, I guess. Yeah, faster. yeah, like a slow time. Like I need somebody. I need like fairy yeah, of zephyrusness, like, alacrity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the slow time spell that just kicks in for everything around me except for me. What's and, a, in um, Dragon Ball Z, a hyperbolic time chamber. Sure. Yeah, go. if I could just like hook up that around here. That yeah, I guess great. you're new to like manga and stuff. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, oh, I I totally am. I'm fresh off the boat. I have so no idea. So in Dragon Ball Z. The heroes are not strong enough to beat the villain, and then they're like, okay. and then the 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 mentor guy's like, "Don't worry, I've got the answer. Go in here. It's a hyperbolic time chamber, and time is is much slower in there. You can be in there for a limit of two years and just go in there and train, and then come oh. out <laughs> to in like okay. you'll and time will pause here while you're in there. And so they go and train for two years in the hyperbolic time chamber, come out and beat the beat the villain. Right? That's how they, you know." I would absolutely, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> that would be great. If I could, because that's, um, the, yeah, what fairy would I, I, the, you know what? I could use more education, uh, art education. I could really use more of the basic fundamental art fairy mm. who comes mm -hmm. in the form of a regular teacher that I gut instinct look at and say, I know this already, but I should actually go back and revisit all those fundamentals more and more and more all the time to just uh, get better fundamentally. Because mm -hmm. I think that like the fundamental thing, like if you have good scaffolding, everything else is good around that. Um, so that would be on the art, the, the practical drawing side would be that, just like getting better and better and better at fundamentals. Um, and uh, not being dismissive of other people's skills mm. because uh you can learn from everything mm. although i i don't think i am i mean i do i suck in everything from everybody or i try to yeah. and um absorb their power like a vampire and leave them just it's, like a husk it's like, a really important skill to be able to like take feedback or see what other people are doing and filter what's good and bad mm -hmm. because yeah. some people will take feedback personally and they won't be able to take it in and other people will take every kind of feedback and then it just becomes this like monster of you know if you fix one problem yeah. you're going to break something else like if it's if the if the pole doesn't reach over here and you make it reach there you're pulling it like and there's only one length you know 
kind of thing. Yeah, and and I think it's it's also too if you um, you know, absorb stuff that isn't what you like. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's like if I um, if I just look at other artists that are doing kind of what I'm doing and like oh look they do and those like this you know that that's not really a thing mm -hmm. you know it's like mm -hmm. instead look at just like the larger art world and other stuff that's going on look at people that are oil painting and that like like learn from like beyond your scope of what you're into yeah. it's like if you're writing mm -hmm. you know it's like you're really into fantasy i'm reading some brandon sanderson right now because mm -hmm. i did a brandon sanderson oh, video yeah, I so i i'm reading Mistborn. i i'm i'm quite liking it uh but if I was like gonna be... He's lame though, so you're not supposed to. <laughs> well, okay, I, I, will, I will admit it. On every other page, there's like somebody is raising an eyebrow. It's the guy is right. Like there's a lot of raised eyebrows and it's raising the eyebrow, rolling of the eyes or frowning. Those are like the go-to things with Brandon Sanderson, mm -hmm. but he has a lot of cool ideas. Yeah. So I can see why people like, I am, uh, kind of captivated by Mistborn so far. I, mm. I do, I, I am enjoying it. Um, it's not necessarily my thing, mm -hmm. but I totally see why people absolutely love it. Like it's good fantasy right. uh, in that type of thing. Like, but um, yeah, I guess if I was like, the, if the creativity fairy was coming, um, also just good ideas, like original thinking mm -hmm. would be great. Like purging purging influences around me like so you want a fairy that comes and picks picks up the bad ideas and the bad influences and uh takes it takes it takes away out the trash you'd like to to have a trash pickup of uh of your bad ideas yeah. then you'd like uh you, a child. <laughs> <laughs> like you, want a, sure. you want a fairy to uh just be an art tutor <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. I want a fairy to be an art tutor and I want a fairy to give me the mind of a child. And I think that's part of why I'm loving manga so much because mm -hmm. it, it feels like this uh, unapologetic, like um, there's no constraints about what's cool. It's yeah. like, no, it's, it's rooster fighter. It's like, are roosters trending right now? Like, right. you know, there's none of that. It's kind of like, let's just make something fun and that's surprising. Like unabashedly and creative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I kind of love that. And I, yeah. I, I don't know if it's age or what, but there's kind of a rut that you get in, like say working on Hannibal, like you're on rails and mm -hmm. there's like, there's only a certain window where I'm, where I can be creative. Right. And that's in like the, the visual presentation of the story. And then you've got like Lindy beige over my shoulder saying every shot has to be from this angle. And it's and like, can't, and like, you know, it's like, what? Oh, I remember, like, I remember the like, old, no, that's, like we're making it, I'm making a comic. I'm not like, no, sorry. <laughs> I remember the old, like Sargon, um, uh, stream that you did where oh, he yeah. was like, you can't have a view from above cause there were no helicopters <laughs> for the battle of Kanai where they have the, uh, the, the, uh, encirclement or whatever, or the, um, I don't know you call it, the envelopment. So like yeah. he didn't want the envelopment to be just, uh, shown from above, but it's like, how else would you, because at the time they didn't know they were being enveloped. Otherwise they wouldn't have been enveloped. <laughs> so yeah. how, how could you, uh, how could you show up from that height? Like, yeah. So like we have, that's another like tricky thing too. Cause we, you're, you're collaborating with somebody where you have completely different sensibilities where the, the, the one person is like, well, no, I like, everything has to be at eye level yeah. because that's what people are. And it's like, well, that's like, I loved 1917. Um, that, that movie, that's like a war okay. movie. It's all kind of um, on the ground, all one shot mm -hmm. where you're sort of in the yeah. trenches. Um, really cool. Uh, but that would make an awful comic. I feel like, uh, I feel like there's 50,000 know, Roman ghosts that could attest to an encirclement not being obvious from eye level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's just good storytelling. It's like, well, <laughs> comics are a very specific kind yeah. of medium. And, and that's tricky too, like, um, like adapting it so that it works as a comic. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky thing. So I know uh, one, YouTuber, fun, yeah. one YouTuber, your boy, Zach, uh, he reviews comics. Oh, yeah. And one of the things oh, wait, that he I don't always know critiques he is. is like flat angles from panel to panel, constantly mm -hmm. doing flat angles makes it really boring to look at. And I do it kind does. of agree that you you got to like mix it up a little bit and get something interesting. Yeah, again. absolutely. Like I still have this kind of thing burned in my head from um, there was these great videos and they're on YouTube now. Um, they were uh, 
what are they called? How to draw comics the Marvel way. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're fantastic. And my, one of my comic book heroes, John Buscema is, is in one of these videos and he's talking about like composition and, and laying out panels and that. And he was saying a good rule of thumb is that on every, every page, you should at some point move the camera, you know, so that it's either like up high or down below or this kind of thing. And it's totally true. Like you have to keep your eye moving around and keep it engaging. I mean, it's a visual medium at the end of the day. So you have to like, you have to have some kind of dynamic stuff going on. Otherwise you have a very boring looking thing. And humans are not like, like if everybody too is sort of just uh, like realism doesn't necessarily work in the comic form. You know, it, it doesn't really project in the way that it could. And it's not that exciting. If you want to do something that's super realistic, go make a movie, you know? And I think a lot of people think that. A lot of people see comics as um, just like still movies or something. And it's like, no, they're comics. It's a totally, yeah, it's not a movie. Yeah. And you see that with like a lot of image comics are just like movie pictures. Nothing. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, nothing is quite as visceral as a full page like, I, I remember I read, like, Siege, where, like, uh, it's a Marvel comic where, like, one character, like, just, like, rips the another character entirely apart. And there's nothing more visceral than a full-page spread of someone just getting destroyed in a comic or a, or a really solid hit. There's, like, there's yeah. some stuff you can do with certain mediums that you can't do with others, you know? It's, yeah. like... Like, uh, everyone was memeing about uh, The Color Out of Space from H.P. Lovecraft. Because, like, H.P. Lovecraft oh, yeah. is famous for describing stuff that can't be rendered visually. Yeah. And that's yeah. something you can do with the written medium that's really inspired me to, like, with my uh, most recent book. I, I, I did it. I tried it a couple times, not on horror elements, but in other things. And mm -hmm. um, uh, it was it was really, like, uh, like, really rewarding. And it's, like, finding the thing that your medium can do better than other mediums is really rewarding. And, like, uh, I think... To me, as like a casual comic reader, I think it's the super visceral hits when you, in a yeah. comic. Like those are you can't get that in an animation. You can't get sometimes movies will pause on a hit, but it's not the same as just sitting them there with the book and they turn the page when they want to when they're done looking yeah. at how cool it is. You know, and and subtlety doesn't really read that well. It's like mm -hmm. okay, if you look really closely, you'll notice that this is happening over here. It's like that doesn't really work with storytelling. And I think it's like, I kind of, I come from like a storyboard background, um, like uh, like working in animation, mm -hmm. like a lot of it was storyboards. So I kind of come from like that choreography of telling a story in the most exciting way that you can, you know, that's your job. And and uh, that's kind of, it's fun. It's like, that's what makes it fun. And I think like, say with Hannibal, there's this one scene uh, with Kanai where the, it's basically a giant slaughter going on. And I thought it'd be cool to just, um, yeah, like if it was a movie, you would pull the camera back and up and just overlook the battlefield and have this like straight top down God's eye view of just like, just mayhem, you know, complete yeah. slaughter, just brutality. And it would kind of like just pull back and pull back and pull back and it'd be this giant thing. But it's like, if, uh, if you don't, if you don't think that, helicopters were i don't know it's like it's like well, it's, but it it's looks called cool. a bird's eye view it's, it's a bird view. yeah it's like how did we get up here it's like i what do you what are you talking about so i mean i don't mean in any way to like i'm totally just saying this out of fun and as a as a joke yeah, yeah. Right, i don't mean right. i'm not disparaging it at it all is, kind of just yeah. like, it's it is yeah it is just funny stuff. because it's like well if they could have yeah. if they could have told if they if the romans could tell they were getting encircled they wouldn't have been encircled <laughs> So obviously, like you know, there's fifty thousand yeah. people. There's fifty thousand Roman ghosts that agree with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Or if somebody's just walking by, and you have you have like feet walking, you have people walking through a muddy field. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, instead of just having a, a side shot of people walking, yeah, look at them go, and okay, yeah, oh, it looks like they're muddy. You know, why not open with a shot of just like feet, like knee, almost knee deep in mud or something? Mm -hmm. You know, like like really show it up close and be like, yeah mud mm -hmm. stuck in the mud you know really get in there and show that stuff instead of like you know but that's the whole i don't know that's where my brain is wired for like the visual kind yeah. of thing but uh, like working on the silver wing thing was great because it was sort of um it's not that they uh, uh didn't have things to say about the art or anything but mm -hmm. it was really cool just having free reign and uh and 
kind of going like, I'm going to go over here and see what I can get away with. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, okay, that's cool. And it's like, oh, wow. Okay. We can do cannibalism right on. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, like bats eating other bats, you know, graphically, you know, this kind of thing. So it was an interesting, um, it was interesting to, to do that, I guess, or to have some freedom, but uh, yeah. So with, with your stuff in fantasy, what about the art side? Uh, how, how's that going? Uh, I'm still, you know, I'm still developing as an artist myself. This is like really yeah, the first uh, comic that I've crowdfunded where I'm like trying to do kind of like uh, an anime-like style, but with a little bit of like my own flair with it. Maybe a little bit yeah. cartoony, more expression in some areas and, you know. But I, I've been testing out other techniques while I've been like doing it and learning as yeah. I go along the way. One of the jokes that I make is like, the further you get into the comic, the better the art is going to look because I'm doing it all like <laughs> in order. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, when you're testing new techniques, you're getting like better and better at them the more that you're doing yeah. it. So like, it's just upping in quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some yeah. some of the pages are like distractingly like good. Like when when like the oh, are you gonna like spoil no, I'm page? not. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> there's one. There's there's yeah. There's a page. Where, there's a page. where she turns around holding the flower. Okay. Ah, it doesn't give anything away. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it's just like uh, yeah. So what was the process with you guys working together? How did how did that go? Um, like the collaborative type thing was it like i kind of want to draw a lot of this <laughs> was, it, was there some of that going on like right or um... so he kind of made like well you know we went back and forth about like um where exactly we how we wanted to frame out the story and like i did concept art for the characters and then at some point he made a loose script mm -hmm. and it was pretty loose and, and but i was able me, to she... Yeah, you, yeah. you taught me kind of how to translate it into what works in a comic and have me change it because certain things won't play well. And yeah, stuff. I was like kind of explaining like, oh, this is probably going to be more difficult. Yeah. And... So she taught me a lot about writing for comics in the process of making it. Otherwise, I yeah. couldn't have really done it. So it's like, yeah, yeah a lot of people who write novels, um, other other people, not just you, <laughs> but a lot of people aren't very good at like translating their story into comic form. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've noticed it being like very wordy with a lot of yeah. these comics written by people who write novels for a living. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot yeah. of like trimming of that. Yeah. But yeah, then I made like sketches from his loose script and then, you know, rounds of editing, did all the inking work, lost all that progress, had oh, to redo yeah. it again. Uh, <laughs> no way. How, like, so like, uh, so she, she dropped her phone on her laptop. Years ago. Yeah, years ago. Years ago. And then the screen get, went all messed up and stuff. And uh, she turned it off because everything was slow. And I was like, okay, that's a, that's a hard drive. What, ha what, what happened is you drop your phone on the hard drive. Your hard drive is going to die soon, so you should back everything up. And she did. Two years later, it dies when she's not suspecting oh. it, right? Mm -hmm. So nothing's backed up. And they, we had, like, the whole comic was, like, inked, right? Yeah, yeah, like all the inking work was done. Basically, all I had yeah. to do was like the tones, but it just is all done. So the comic oh, ended cool. up taking way longer than it should have. Yeah. But at was the end of the day, the because the inking is better the second time. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I guess so. Because <laughs> I'm putting all these new techniques in it, so yeah. I, I guess it did. I guess it did kind of turn out for yeah for yeah. the better. But you know, it definitely took way longer than yeah. expected. So now we're doing this campaign, but this is actually like way later than we mm. intended for the campaign to be. It was supposed to be last year. Then we got cool. like stuff moved around. Yeah. yeah. But it, how, so are you, is it completed? Almost. I got like, okay. yeah. got a little bit of lettering work to redo. Mm -hmm. And I got like two pages and some supplemental yeah. art, but like, for the most part it's what, done. Yeah. We're like you using some of the wordings software? and stuff. What do you use for software? For, um... I use Clip Studio. I love Clip okay. Studio. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, I love it. Clip Studio is great. The inking in Clip Studio is amazing too. I love the um, the inking tools. Like with Hannibal, I'm inking it old school, like pen and brush and all that kind of stuff. But um, with the Silverwing thing, I use Clip Studio and I, I I love it. I love it. It's so nice. Like in the lettering and stuff. Yeah, it's a great like 
It's my favorite. Program, There's somewhat basically. of a like debate with artists, like which is better, traditional or uh, digital, or like because some people prefer the digital for making their art quicker and cleaner, and then some people yeah. prefer like kind of the 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 more down to earth traditional style. I don't know if you have a preference, or if you have a horse in that uh, race. <laughs> I I'll just say I really wish that I didn't do Hannibal traditionally. Oh <laughs> yeah, I can like, see that. I really wish I didn't. Because uh, like when you're saying about how uh, time goes by and then the, it's like towards the end, it's better. Um, that's exactly the, the problem. Like I started drawing this thing ages ago and now I have to resume that. And it's like, who was this guy who drew this stuff? Cause he's, he's like long gone. I don't know how to draw like that. And like, like I've, 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 I've changed as an artist. Like I've adapted, I've changed. And I see some of the, a lot of that stuff and I hate it. And if it was, uh, it's just awful. It's like a nightmare. Cause it's like, I have to like, I got to draw poorly now. Or it's like, it's a very frustrating, like you have to rewire yourself into this old state. Like, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a, kind of like a double-edged sword. Cause it's like, it's inspiring in a way to see how much you've improved, but at the same yeah. time, oh no, people are going to see the bad stuff. It's, yeah, and if it's, yeah. if it's digital, you can go back and you can revisit stuff easier and tweak it easier. Very Whereas, true. like, if I gotta like, okay, this guy's character design stinks. Look at his stupid face. That's got to go. Uh, he needs a new head. You know, I need new heads on all these pages. Yeah. And so then you gotta redraw all that and scan it in and da 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 and go through that whole thing. Um, and then you have originals that now, I guess I'll just tape that new head onto the original. Um, but yeah, it, it's a weird. It's, it's a tricky thing. Like I, I'm partial to um, digital just for flexibility. Like with the Silverwing book, what I did to solve that problem of starting out one way and ending up at another way is like, because I had a whole script, I started from the middle out. Like I laid out the entire book kind of just with notes, like a, a PDF kind of thing. I made notes like, okay, this page, this like here where all the page breaks are basically in the script. And then started drawing it at like page 100 and then just kind of like did this like bouncing from the middle to the end so like the the last pages inked were page one and page 220 or whatever so it's like that way the stuff that sucks is in the middle and so it starts <laughs> good and it ends good and when there's that bit of weirdness where you were figuring out kind of how you move yeah it's not that noticeable because it's in the middle so you, you start in the middle, you work out, and then by the time you get to the beginning and the end, you flushed out everybody, and and that's your best stuff. So that that's, that's my like big brain. That's my big brain take on approaching. Uh, stuff. I know some people like to do like the easiest panels first and have that be like what they showcase as the art for uh, the comic. I knew one <laughs> artist that that like wanted to do that. But uh, yeah. as it turned out, uh, it was more of a handicap for them rather than like more of a more rather than a stylistic choice to like go for the easier pages first. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Also, you end up having this um, dark cloud of having to get up and work on the stuff that that you don't want to get to. Mm -hmm. Right. This is red. <laughs> yeah. And if you just do a page as it, like, if you take the pages as they come, you're like, oh, I'm dreading these next three pages. They, they suck. But you know, there's going to be easier panels in there that like, there's a balance, I guess. Whereas if you did all the cool stuff at the beginning and then you're like gassed out basically, and now you've got to do like the marathon at the end that, yeah, that's the opposite. I'd, I'd go the other way. My fairy would tell me to go the other way, <laughs> do the worst stuff first and get it over with. Like do the heavy lifting, and, yeah, and get the very that stuff. least. Yeah, yeah, I was honestly really surprised that the uh, artist of One Punch Man does it all traditionally. I like watch some of oh. their like streams because it's like so crisp and clean looking that I just assumed yeah. it had to have been digital. It's like pretty yeah. impressive, honestly, watching them uh, do all the inking work. Yeah, I've been doing some drawing, like, uh, like I'm, do I'm doing all the layouts for Hannibal um, in Clip Studio. But I've kind of been like doing some 
some drawing traditionally, I guess, uh, for like my YouTube stuff. Like I, I'm reading Mistborn and I'm gonna do a little review on, on Mistborn and then I'm gonna just have some B-roll is what the pro YouTube people call it. Okay. <laughs> some B-roll of uh, me drawing a, a Steel Inquisitor or whatever from uh, Mistborn. And so I'm kind of like playing around with inking again and I kind of love it. But at the same time, as I'm inking, I'm constantly just like, ah, control Z. Like control Z again. <laughs> Constantly, like my brain is so wired for that, that it's weird. It's like I fuse the machine. It's so frustrating. Whenever I'm like, drawing on the tablet, basically my hands are like hovering over the control Z for quick oh, totally. access. Just... Yeah. And every, every like stroke that I make, there's like, there's five lines that got control Z for every one, you know, yeah. it's constantly just like, bah, bah, bah. no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's like, it's constantly like that. So yeah, it's, um, as far as the fairies go though, cause that popped into my head again. Um, have you ever read and productivity, the productivity fairy, um, right. there's a guy named Steven Pressfield and he has a book called the war of art. And it's kind of in that eat, pray, love type schmaltzy okay. pop psychology category. But I will say that it, it's actually handy. Like okay. it's sort of a toilet reader. I mean that in like a good way, it's something you like pick up once in a while and flip through, yeah. but there's a lot of good nuggets in there for how to like rewire your brain for productivity and um, just to like train yourself to like hit it, you know, and All to right. kind of have, I'll like, take any advice you, I can get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That thing where you can like flip it on, like how you're like, I can flip on creativity. It's mm. that same thing, but like flipping on uh, productivity. Because most yeah. people would find the creativity harder than the productivity. Yeah, it's it's weird because I don't struggle with the motivation because like I I can like ha have it open and want to be doing it, and then I'll just realize I'll look at the time and realize I've been there for three hours and done a paragraph, and it's just like, you know, and so I'm kind of, I I just realize that I work slower than I I should be, and I'm just like yeah. With this this last book, I was actually really proud of myself. Uh, my my first novel, like I, I came from short stories, my first novel took two years and change. Um, okay. So like it took me like a year to write it because it's just so different writing a novel from writing a short story. It's just, there's so much room for stuff all of a sudden. Um, right. <laughs> and so I was just like, yeah, I was just like really adjusting to a new kind of style that I, I the style I wanted to be writing with, I realized I couldn't really do in short stories. So I was, I was, I was enjoying adjusting to novel writing, but it took, it took me like a year. And then with this, and then it took me, a little over a year to edit it um, because you know you write the whole book you get to the end and there's just like this Sisyphean like Ouroboros like Jormungandr going through in an endless it's like oh the first chapter let's check that out oh it's horrible and then you get better as you're editing through and then you're like and it's bad again so then eventually <laughs> I you know I caught up eventually but it was just like you know the it's just yeah it's never perfect. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I got to a point where I was really happy with it. I read through the whole thing and I was like, good. And I, you know, and I was done. But there are like writers who have described being trapped in that and never escaping. Yeah. Like uh, well, there's some famous authors yeah. that won't read their own books because they're like, then I'll see all the problems in the beginning. And it's like, Ugh. yeah. And when do you stop noodling? Because you can noodle something to death. Like you can, yeah, you can. You can keep going and going and going forever. And it's kind and of it changes way. the rhythm of it too. Like you can yeah. like in like Game of Thrones, reading the beginning, it would made me anxious because I could tell how much he edited that first section and it felt like mm -hmm. folded like paper that had been folded up, unfolded and put back in his po in, in his pocket and then unfolded. I could tell like the rhythm was wrong. Like it wasn't normal. Like it, mm -hmm. there was something like messed up, right. like things I could tell which lines weren't there originally. And at some point I was like, it made me anxious to read it because it was so edited that I was like, you know, I was thinking of myself like editing and it's just like, oh, I can't. yeah, that's like, it's like with drawing in a way too. Cause like, if, um, like, I really like the layout phase, there's kind of a bit of an energy there and, and this kind of thing. But once you, uh, like one of the problems that I, I find comes in, like say with the Hannibal stuff is after you hammer in the realism, you suck all the life out of it. And that kind of that organic, natural loosey goosiness is gone. The energy sucked out. And now you're left with sort of this 
thing that's half of something, yeah. half of another, you're, like you're, does, neither, does neither effectively. So it's like, what's the point? Yeah, you know? you're you're talking about uh, Mc, the McFarlane like Spider Man uh, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, where Love like it. the He's proportions don't stuff. quite make sense, and it was like, yeah. but it's because it, it was heavy fingers, energy. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two left hands and six fingers. Yeah. So yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I, it's it's that energy that's just mm. that I love, and uh, yeah, that that's a fairy that I would like too, is somebody to preserve that looseness yeah. before your self consciousness gets in and kills it. Like yeah. that's what I guess why I said like the the child mind that just like lets stuff right. go, and with writing it's probably there too, probably the same thing. Yeah, yeah. There's there's like you know because it makes me think of like cuteness. There's like a lot of like. Um, like Japanese stuff talking about like kawaii and how it's like hard to grasp and it makes sense kind of because like you can make something super cute and it doesn't really have to do with realism it's very parallel to it mm. yeah. yeah so like you know it's like how do you make something more cute there's not really a there's not like add more lines you know it's like you can yeah. make some, a ball more 3D by adding more shading but you can't you know make something you're talking about the exaggeration of something certain features that, yeah I guess yeah I don't know. But maybe really... I'm just like a caveman. Like this is just my like troglodyte brain trying to grasp art. I don't know. No, I totally. Like when I like if I'm on Instagram or something, and you know, you, you see all these like a lot of them are, are female, and it's like a lot of there's all these like young art girls that are crushing it. That are just like they're just they're doing like the social media thing. They're just like these entrepreneurial. Uh, they just they kind of they're so good at what they do, yeah. and there's this cuteness to a lot of the stuff they do. And I'm kind of amazed by it because like, it's like that, it looks deceptively simple. It's like, well, mm. I, I should be able to draw that if I want, I, I, I could bang out 20 or 30 of those things, but not really because mm. I have a jaded, like you, like a caveman brain. That's like, you know, not going to have that certain thing in there that gives it that cuteness that it needs. And yeah, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah, I gotta say, like, Instagram, probably one of my least favorite social media platforms for, like, promoting anything. <laughs> There's a lot of likes that you can get fairly but you easily, can't... but, like, it's so yeah. hard to get people to, like, go to your website or actually because of the link yeah. thing, first of all. Yeah. And then, like, I know someone who promoted a post of theirs um, recently, actually. And uh, they have the comic, a comic of theirs on my website, and they a they asked me if like they made any sales since the promotion. Zero zip, and it, it was yeah. like I felt bad, you know, because it's obviously not not working for whatever reason on Instagram. People people buy stuff on on Instagram, like that's like there's a decent amount of people like shopping from Instagram, but like if you post a link in your on a post, I you can't click on it unless you pay Instagram to let people click on the link, you know. People have to go yeah. to your your profile, and then you have yeah. to change the one link in your profile to the thing, you know. Yeah, it's very like, I not don't know how... like small business friendly, yeah. really. It's like, yeah, I think you have to boost the post. I I okay, I'm trying to think if I've done this. I have boosted posts. Like right yeah. now, I have a I have like a tiny trickle running of uh, advertising on Instagram mm -hmm. to try and uh, you know boost, see if that helps like grow my channel because it basically flatlined for like two years. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm YouTube school for the last six months, I'm like, I have to take things seriously. Um, so including Instagram and, uh, but I don't know if there's any translation into real world payoff. I don't know if like, if you, like I have some prints that I would like to advertise on Instagram. And I guess if I have the right targeting that would increase the chances of them selling, but I, I don't know. I mean, that that's kind of why I spent a lot of time um, listening to these, yeah, like these young girls that are hustling. Hmm. They're hustling yeah. I've... and they're crushing it. And it's like, I want to know what you're doing. You're 13 and you've got an empire. I've heard. What are you doing? How can I learned from you. I've, I've heard that like uh, women are just like genetically predisposed to grow social media followings, like just to cultivate sense. and grow a, a, a thing because of like whatever, yeah. like maintaining a family and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I have yeah. no idea. Well, I mean, I could easily. I could, I'll. I'll. Oh man. <laughs> you ready? Ready to switch? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> um, yes, I agree. I also think um, I always refer to it as like girl YouTube and girl Instagram, like talking with my wife and stuff because she's on girl Instagram and mm. I'm on boy Instagram and I like stuff that is uh, horrific and boy stuff. I follow a lot of like, I don't know, like horror movie type. I mean, my wife used to work in, on, in horror movies and stuff, but um, mm. You know, it's like boy stuff, and she's kind of there's a lot of cuter things in her world. But uh, the female side of things, they're much more supportive of each other, and they're much more um, they're nicer. Whereas guys are kind of like, yeah, I'll look at your stuff, but like I'm not gonna like give you money. Like hmm. I gotta like I gotta do the tires. <laughs> you know, I wonder, I wonder like, what that is. Like, uh, you know, like my my mom will do like yoga or whatever and then like the she'll always buy the other yoga people's like thing that they're doing like she she came home with rogue water which is like a, it's just water but it's magic or something and it'll keep away i don't know i feel like both of your parents are kind of like that though. Uh, yeah. well no i don't know my i don't know like the last couple of years my dad has become super like vulnerable to like instagram ads and like like infomercials <laughs> like he bought me sunglasses but i i have glasses so i can't they're not prescription sunglasses so like i don't know what he was thinking like i want to put another pair of sunglasses over and he's like offended when i wouldn't wear them i was like i'm not gonna wear two pairs of glasses <laughs> like how bad did this like infomercial get you <laughs> like what? do you even know who i am <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could advertise my books so good that like someone would buy them for someone blind. <laughs> like... Yeah, I, I, and this is the thing. Like, I'm, I'm obsessed with it. Like, I, I don't know what works. And the whole marketing thing right now is hilarious. Like everything. Like, I'm obsessed with everything from what say the geniuses of Bud Light are doing, all the way <laughs> over to um, the new Marvels movie. Again, I love it. Just absolutely brilliant. Cha Ching. Mm -hmm. uh to um but even weird floppy things like with pop culture like um uh where the marketing does a disservice like the new D, &D movie like i really liked it but mm -hmm. i was apprehensive about seeing it because the marketing for it was weird right. and i just but, assumed it would be as bad as the current D, D. like i just didn't i didn't trust it at all i didn't i didn't get my hopes up or anything it's i was fun, it's really good have you seen it uh i've no, heard other I people haven't. say that it was like can't be enough to like work you know okay or maybe you did see it right now you're thinking oh, okay who is this guy he like i haven't no i haven't i haven't seen it i've just seen <laughs> i've just seen like the books that like watsi is putting out and i'm just like oh, man like it might have just been chris pine i might have just been all uh googly eyed over for chris pine and he just... uh, maybe you know if you say it's good maybe maybe i'll watch it um if you're in the right mood, if you treat it like uh, a goofy comedy, yeah, don't uh, have I too laugh. high of expectations. Oh, I have, yeah. I have like zero expectations. I, you know, I, I worry sometimes about how low people's like expectations are, because like the whole like I feel like the whole mainstream like thing is to just like make people okay with bad stuff by only putting out bad stuff. Like Alita oh, totally. came out and was good. It was a very good movie. I can highly recommend it. But then okay. Disney bought it and just stop making good stuff <laughs> they, there was, there's no sequel announced all of a sudden like it was a very popular yeah. movie but they're like no, no. no work we, on avatar 2 we don't make good movies over here <laughs> yeah who do you think you are yeah yeah well it, it does seem like there's a huge um yeah like the last like however many it's it's running into like decades now like i find myself going way back and looking at like old old stuff mm. like if i want to mm. be surprised I've got to like, I've got to go back to like the forties or the fifties <laughs> and watch some like really old. Uh, and I recommend people do that. Like go back and like little, movies. little shop around the corner is really good. Trisha That's was good. like putting on all these like old black and white movies. Little shop around the corner is like my favorite romance movie. It was, it was really okay, cute. Cool. When I was, when I was yeah. writing treading water, it was a romance. And so I was like, trying to ingest as much of that stuff as i could there's a remake of it that's awful this this is really famous too it's a really popular movie you've got mail is the remake of uh oh, like, well, it's like yeah. loosely oh, wow. based but the, you know it's, it's yeah it's i mean it's it's so loosely they decided based. to just yeah. insert cheating into it the first like five minutes of the movie they're, they're cheating on me <laughs> like you know, i was like what's going on it's my parents same. recommended this to me <laughs> like is that like in the new one they inserted the cheating? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. In the original, I, I, I it's much more wholesome. Like a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll insert that. Um, <laughs> with a fist. 
um, yeah, I watched Night of the Night of the Hunter recently, which okay. is pretty cool. Like with Robert Mitchum, who's kind of like anyway. Like I find like going back, you can actually be surprised watching stuff because no, like nothing. It's just you know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get the same old, same old. Uh, I loved Paddington one and two. Uh, those were kind of surprising. I quite enjoyed. Those. Okay. Uh, definitely like thumbs up for Paddington. I, I loved it. Um, as far as kids stuff goes, but, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's tough to know what, like where, where the zeitgeist is at and how you sell stuff and how mm -hmm. you like, how do you make it like as, as an author, I would, my gut reaction, my gut, my instinct would be to say, um, self-publishing mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and go from there and build yeah. up an audience. But that and that audience means uh, YouTube and yeah. uh, uh, dancing like a monkey and right. doing stuff that's awkward and cringe. Pe yeah. And <laughs> people <laughs> ask know. me about like uh, going to a, a publisher, but it doesn't really make sense anymore because a publisher, the first thing they want to know is how many social media followers do you have? They want you to advertise your own book nowadays. But, right. So, so it's like, well, why don't I just self publish? Maybe them? there's some like big publishing houses that will advertise for people, but it's only for like the biggest names that they publish. Like they'll advertise for like JK Rowling or something, but they're not going to advertise yeah. for you. And so if you're going yeah. in, they want, they want to know um, what your social media following is because they expect you to promote your own book. And then yeah. they will give you like an ad advance or something. So if you're hard up for cash, then you could go through the titanic effort of getting into like a, a publishing house. And then you could, they could give you a loan based on the, the proposed success of your book. But then you would yeah. like lose more money on like the royalties in like perpetuity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just you like, less. there's, you know, and then the money you make per book is much much lower so there's there's really no reason like if you're successful enough to get a publisher you're successful enough enough to publish on your own so it's like yeah the yeah. only thing i really envy about uh what you get with a publisher is the distribution because mm -hmm. distribution is really hard especially with comics yeah you know? how did you get worldwide uh shipping i just like i noticed on your old uh the in search of hannibal it says like ships anywhere in the world like how did you do that well uh fairies all those, shipping fairies all those, yeah all those years ago when we started that i was living in berlin and oh. you could ship a book anywhere in the world for about three dollars wow oh. yeah that's crazy so I was, good because i was i was self-publishing uh, i had like my webcomic thing that i published and i was selling i sold thousands of those things and um it was three bucks anywhere in the world worldwide shipping so i got them printed in poland polish dude showed up with a pallet of books right and i stored them in every corner of the apartment and right. uh it smelled like ink all the time and um basically it was three bucks international shipping so hannibal uh would be more than that because of the weight and stuff but yeah. at the time yeah. it's like well this is no problem i can get it printed in either poland or latvia or wherever and then yeah. just have it in storage and get it shipped out with affordable shipping um but yeah i've had to move and I'm not there anymore. So oh God. Do, is it, do I fly over and rent a space? Like it might actually, like shipping is this gigantic nightmare. Yeah. It like, is, yeah. uh, it's one of these things where the project has been so delayed that um, the variables have changed so much. Yeah. And what would have worked then won't work now. Right. And so I'm still This is like, a bigger horror, horror story than I even thought. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's that, there's that oh, whole man. level too. And um so yeah, it's it's there's a whole level of nightmare. That if you want like, flat rate shipping from the United States, like the US USPS offers a forty dollar flat rate box, whatever you can fit in the box, it doesn't matter how yeah. heavy it is. And yeah, then, but if you're just shipping one book, yeah, that's not, not a great it. rate, no. <laughs> but it's but just you like have media mail. We do have media right. mail, yes. Yeah, Thank, but that's only yeah. in the country. Thank God for media mail. They try to, they yeah. try to like the post office has like some signs where they're like, oh, like if you try to send something like media mail, bad, and they, they on their website it doesn't work for some reason. When you order media mail, they're trying to like make you not do it because it's you know, but but yeah, well, no, I've, I I've, I ship everything with media mail. Mm. I've can't, toyed can't with every me. idea. I thought of like, okay, well, I can get the books printed, shipped here. And then, um, you want me I'll to drive to the trips. Canadian border, pick them up, and media mail it everywhere? <laughs> well, I'm gonna do weekly trips across the border and go to like Montana no, and then okay. go to the nearest small town. And I'm gonna show up every you're like, a, you're like an arms dealer, like <laughs> crossing yeah. the border with books. 
<laughs> like yeah. a like an arms dealer for wizards. You're just like crossing the border with a bunch of tomes, like people opening up the books to flip through to see if there's money in the pages. Well, yeah, it, but then it's like when that happened, it was like, well, that when that was an idea, it's like, well, wait a second. Uh, it's a yeah. There's so many variables, and it's so difficult. I think the solution will end up being because I think the his channel has grown insane since we started. So mm-hmm. in a way. We're going to have to do another Kickstarter or at least tell people like, uh, hey, like it's done. It's going to print. We need the numbers because we do need the print number. Right. OK. Because you think yeah. okay, I was I was joking. I was I was joking with Trisha. I was like, it might be worth uh, it might be worth emailing people to make sure they live in the same place because seven years is a long oh. time. And then oh, I've Trisha, times. <laughs> Trisha was like, you should email and make sure they're alive. <laughs> so yeah. Could die. Well, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. She's Talk about like, going, she's like, what do they say? Like, God forbid or whatever. Like, she's just like, yeah, you know, like it's <laughs> delivering it's to not, their grave. It's not, it's not, it's not funny, but it's a little bit, you know. Well, yeah, I, uh, gotta be careful what to. Yeah, uh, <laughs> in a way, it's like, well, we ten percent are gone. <laughs> you know, like it sounds terrible, but yeah, it's all of these, Ugh. all these different variables, and this is the curse of uh, having something delayed and money that's hanging out there luckily his his channel's grown so when we get the final number uh mm-hmm. we'll, we'll do another kickstarter basically and be like look i assure you it's done here's the printing proofs we just got to know for printing five thousand ten thousand or fifteen like we got to know right. what the number is so we need people to and that that book will have an increased cover price because yeah. the, the people who got in early they got it for like a lower price but now right. things have gone up and so it's not unreasonable to add a bit of a sticker price. Yeah. It's also a bigger book. It's going to be fancier. And uh, and then the shipping is going to have to probably be a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But I'm guessing the solution is probably in the States with a fulfillment center. And probably, I, I don't know if I can print it in Europe, probably not. It might have to be China, like realistically. Oh. I, I don't know. Well, no, there's, of there's, there's really good. I got. I don't you know. know this one printer that gave you a really good rate. Yeah, that was for a novel. I don't know. I don't know if they do comics or anything, but there's there's a bunch of really good printers, like you said, in like Latvia and like Lithuania and stuff. Like Eastern Europe yeah. has some really good like printers, like high yeah. quality. So, I mean, if anybody listening has any tips, like yes, yeah. well, type I, the, in the comments. The printer, oh. the printer that like I I talked to a printer, and like it just so happened that the shipping was like just the. The, the rates they gave me on the books are very good. If I could pick them up, that'd be great. But, you know, I, I couldn't. And yeah. the the shipping was high enough that I wanted to look around to other options, but it, it wasn't like, I don't know. Anyway, they, have a, they had a thing where they offered to distribute it because they have a deal with whoever in like okay. uh, Germany and uh, the, the UK. They had like a deal with like the British Postal Service and Germany so they could tr- uh, distribute across uh, wherever. If you printed with them, yeah. that's those are for novels. I, I could give you their information, um, but uh, for the U.S., there's a bunch of printing centers that also offer distribution and stuff for books. I don't know, like you know, there's I don't know, you know, there's got to be. Yeah, I it's it's you're a, probably it's definitely... you're probably gonna have to print it in a place like in in the like. <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking about like I'm thinking about like if you want to spread a virus, right? You're gonna like mm-hmm. if you're playing like whatever a game that was. It was called a uh, pandemic. Pandemic, yeah. You <laughs> want to like start it in a and spread it. So you're probably gonna want to print it someplace central to your like like you know if you if you printed with like someplace in Eastern Europe that has like a deal with you know like similar to the one I was talking about deal with Germany yeah. deal with uh, the UK then you can kind of yeah, get it everywhere. Yeah. And then somewhere in the U.S., they also have, like, a distribution and, and stuff. Maybe. The, the tricky thing yeah. is the, the shipping, like, our uh, our postal stuff here is insane. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. and, and it's just when we started this thing, it was like, when I was in Germany, it was, like, cheaper to mail a book from uh, there to Australia or Canada than it is for me to mail a book across the street right now. Like, it's you know, 20 bucks to mail a book across the street in Canada. It's insane. Like, I'm like, you know, <laughs> you'd think, because like the USPS is like a semi like uh, the the way that the government has like fixed prices, it's like a semi socialist thing. You would think that Canada, not saying anything in particular about Canada, you'd think they would have also had the price fixing in Canada. 
Yeah, but yeah. Do you know? Do you have? Uh, is, it, is it government run the uh, the postal service, or uh, is it private companies? Is it all like FedEx and stuff? I, I would say it's a public private partnership. It's oh, it's one of those. Well, that sounds companies. that that. Yeah, it's great. Mm, yeah, that sounds so, like most okay. things. Uh, people have a very. Like, like Canadians have a very goofy idea about how great this place is because like most of them have never lived anywhere else. It's mm. like, well, Americans like, have a great, have like a interesting perspective on it. A lot of Americans talk about moving to Canada because everything's perfect. Yeah. A lot of Americans yeah. hate themselves. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, boo, America. And yeah. That's like really frustrating. Self-hate is like a weird ideology. Like, oh, I'm going to move to Canada. And uh, I think there's also a goofy idea about what Canada's like. Like yeah. where, where I am, um, like it's like everyone's armed to the teeth here. <laughs> like everybody's like, I mean, everybody here like yeah. hunts yeah. and farms. I, and this so my, my, my perception of Canada was, of Canada. uh, it's super safe. There's no, no, there's no crime in Canada and uh, free, free, everything, everything's free, uh, healthcare, everything. And, um, yeah, no, and everyone's nice. That's 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 the stereotypes that we're taught in the U.S. is like everything's everything's just like if only we could be like Canada is like all you hear. And they say that about like almost every other. And country. and there's no guns. <laughs> that's the other thing is like uh, that you hear is that there's no guns in Canada, and somehow and somehow that's everything's fine. But then I was watching there's like no cool, there's no cool guns in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was watching like a uh, I was watching a lot of like YouTube stuff about guns because I just don't understand. I've never I never really was around guns, so I. I didn't understand them and I was thinking, well, if I want to write a story with a gun, I really can't like not know how they work. And do you ever do you ever like try to do research and like get bogged down by people that are way too practical? Like I'll be watching like a you know, a, a boat video and they'll be like, Oh, you only need an anchor that's like this big and it's like, Well, but what about sea monsters? And then like they'll they'll be like gun channels like it's so goofy, this gun is too high caliber. Who would ever need that for self defense? It's like I'm here learn, trying to learn about hunting werewolves, buddy. Like, I don't, know, I don't even know. Like, what you, it's yeah. like these videos are like for for people that are like practically using guns, and it's like, wh what about a dinosaur, buddy? Huh? Want to yeah. tell me what yeah. rifle I need for a pterodactyl? Huh? It's like like a buddy of mine yesterday was like he was uh, he was giving me we were talking about vitamins, and he was explaining uh, some type of vitamin and what it does with phosphates and all this kind of stuff. And I was just thinking like, if you could just say makes juice go good, body go vroom, that would be fine. You know, like that's just, you know, you can cut out all of that and just, yeah. and just get right to, yeah, the basics. Yeah. So, uh, what's next? What's after your Kickstarter? Do you have another oh. thing planned? Are you already planning something else? Oh yeah. Oh, all, I the, got all the other stuff that you got lost. <laughs> So there's a there's one comic s series that I had been cooking for a while. Kind of kind of lost the original files for that, like all the mostly mm. just shading work and lettering work, because I have another artist paired off working with me. But yeah, so the next issue for that might be coming out this year. the The tragic thing is like originally I was gonna have all the issues uh, together in a trade paperback for the campaign. And now, you know, losing the the first two is like work I gotta redo and then gotta also finish it and yeah, yeah. The biggest yeah. tragedy is Ellie. <laughs> Ellie, That's yes. Such a big Ellie tragedy. the Eliminator is gone There's forever. Like, <laughs> so like the high res like digital files of Ellie the Eliminator, like this this kid's comic. Um okay. they were all lost. Uh but we just have the digital PDF, right? But that wouldn't print well in a book. Yeah, it's so, like a PDF with all JPEGs and. So like oh. you know, there's and the, there's only like a couple copies left. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that like, sucks. Yeah, and it's so cute. It's so good. Like the, uh, I gave it to like my neighbors, and the the kids were like, they kept on having their parents reread the book to them, and then they were like, uh, they're like, where's the next one? I want an, I want the I want the sequel, and then so the the you know my neighbors like asking like. You have, do you have when, uh, do you have another one we could buy and it's like no just, yeah. <laughs> just that selling kids books it's so easy to like do at fairs and in person mm -hmm. but when you're like on my youtube it's not as easy because yeah. there's not a lot of uh i guess not a lot of parents or kids really watching my content who are going to be like yeah. wanting the the kids comic so i've kind of yeah. like strayed away from 
from doing those and like aiming for more like teen and adult comics in the future? I think that's true with novels too. Like if you're at a book fair trying to sell novels at a book fair, if you're an unknown is like, I think that's extremely hard because there's not, it's like, no, trust me, it's good. You know, you have to do that because it's like, I don't know. Like uh, some people like, will just come up and like they, some people come up with this attitude of like they're magnanimous and so they're going to buy your book and like they like the feeling that the, you're going to give them by by giving you money as like kind of like a donation and like i don't mind yeah. it exactly but like it's so much oh, more yeah. gratifying when someone yeah. comes up and they're like oh this looks cool i want this I, i'm excited to read this yeah um like there was like one chick who came up and was like oh this is a sign you know because i feel like i'm treading water and i was like Fuck yeah! Like his like, book is know. called Treading Water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. So right on. You're yeah. right. There's like all, so what, all kinds of different people at those fairs. So what are your? Uh, so as far as like the um, uh, the the marketing and the selling and all this kind of stuff, what are your sort of goals that you guys have for the like not just for the next stuff, but how you plan on selling it and and marketing it and this kind of thing what do you think like we talked about instagram a little bit but yeah. what do you think are other um what are other directions that you could take or that you would pimp your own work how what would you do i don't know i started a youtube because trisha was so successful with it um and i i've enjoyed that a lot because there's a lot of like a lot of times people will look at like my book and be like oh it's based on a true story and it's like no i you know you wouldn't believe like it's like people saying like uh oh you couldn't write this like yeah you can you can you can oh yeah you can you can make it so much better um there's so much you can do creatively people don't quite understand with like how you can write stuff and just make it so much better but there are true stories that i know that i enjoy telling and so mm -hmm. i wanted to put them someplace so i was thinking like well i'll make youtube youtube videos like doing story time or whatever um so yeah. i was enjoying i'm enjoying doing the youtube channel but um yeah it's like not yeah <laughs> Well, yeah, well, another thing we've been doing is like going to fairs because like mm -hmm. I said with the like personal connection and people feeling really good about directly supporting mm -hmm. the independent creators. It's kind of like this nice exchange that you can yeah. get. We're going to try checking out some like more comic con type places yeah. and uh, anime con type places and see how that yeah. works out. Yeah, but cool. um, those are more expensive. To oh, go yeah. To, but... Oh, yeah. The prices yeah. on those whoo, just keep on going up to but, get a uh, table you... there. Craft fairs aren't so bad. Craft fairs are, yeah. are, can be pretty cheap. So like sure. craft fairs are anywhere between like 25 bucks to like 200 bucks for a table. Um, oh, OK, the ones that are more expensive aren't worth it because I I've noticed we usually make it about the same to, no matter what the. You know, like, I mean, if it's like a super dead fair, you, you don't make, uh, you know, you kind of break even and that's it. Um, but yeah, so I, like, uh, I guess it's like picking a good fair, but then the, um, the cons are all kind of like up there, like, uh, like 400, 500, 600 kind of range. Yeah. They so yeah. Like... Crazy up there. Cause, Cause they expect to have a lot of people and you, you really need to like work hard to sell a lot if you're going to be like making yeah. hopefully twice as much as you be put in there more mm -hmm. but yeah it, it's difficult when you're selling stuff at like really cheap rates it's part of the reason why i want to like move on to doing more like thicker graphic yeah. novels as opposed to like floppy comics which i normally like only sell at like maybe four or five dollars you know i'd have to sell right. a lot of those to make up for a 400 dollar table rate yeah naturally. and then I, i've started like mm -hmm. um meeting other vendors at the fairs and talking to them and like the, the ones that have been doing it for a long time or even haven't like uh, i'll text them when i find out about a good fair and they'll text me so i have like a little mini network of people that know good fairs like someone tipped me off to a fair that was like 25 bucks for two days or okay yeah it was two two days and it was like really good it was, it was like great fair. it was packed each day um it was like packed to the level of like like a, a 200 dollars fair but it was just 25 bucks right and so yeah. it's like a much better made so much money yeah <laughs> yeah it was, it was such a better um but if you notice if you do a youtube video you get a spike in yeah. sales and it's like the amount of effort at a fair is neutralized completely by just one video. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's you know the, I mean? yeah, that too. Like, yeah. 
the the is one it... of the great things about YouTube is just building that audience. Like I yeah. have maybe like a, a thousand to three thousand two a thousand to like two thousand people who will like watch every single one of my videos no matter what I'm kinda talking about. Mm -hmm. More dedicated yeah. fans that are, are more willing to like check out my comics and, and decide whether or not to buy them. Uh yeah. but you know there are some like difficulties in YouTube as well because like not every video is gonna hit a million or anything. It's gonna be oh, like totally. constantly fluctuating based mm. on the topics. Yeah. It's it's really weird. Like I like when I started like awkwardly dipping my toe into the cringy waters of that. Like and not that it's cringe. It's like I'm I'm the one who's like mm. like I'm looking at myself. Uh, and trying to find out what to do. Like I did a video um about Dagon, like or a reading of oh, Dagon. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that did like really well. Like mm -hmm. I got, like it got over a million views. It's insane. But the the problem with that is that all of my subscribers basically came from like a couple of videos, and it's not really what I do, <laughs> you know. Like so, it's this tricky thing of like, well, how can I make my channel compelling? But you know, how can I provide something of value basically to people that are watching it? Uh, like, what is that? What does it look like? And how does it relate to what I actually do, which is like comics and art stuff and this kind of thing. So it's a really tricky thing. So you might have something that hits, you get a bunch of a bunch of subs or a bunch of views, but that's not reflective of your audience. Right. And then it actually breaks the algorithm because mm. then you end up with a lot of subs, but low views uh. and YouTube thinks that your work is uninteresting and that nobody wants to see it. So they don't recommend it. So yeah. it's like I definitely <laughs> struggle with that as well. Like trying to yeah. appease like the f the audience that I already have, the people that are already watching the videos, and they're like, we're kind of yeah. interested on in hearing me talk about very specific topics. But at the same time, I'm trying to like bring in a new audience. You know, like I started doing like more manga reviews, trying to maybe. Yeah pull some of them over my way especially since i'm doing some comics in the future in a more anime like style and i'm thinking also like if everybody's reading manga these days then that's the audience that i need to try to appease as well because hmm. that's where like most of the money is being spent you know yeah, yeah. and i want to show them like hey not all americans are making shitty comics i promise <laughs> please right, right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and it's more related to your actual work like yeah. and, and i think that's the thing like i kind of struggled earlier on with youtube it's like okay the stuff that i like that gets my like juices going and my brain moving like creatively is weird stuff like i i love uh you know hollow earth theory and stuff like yeah that. like that stuff is so yeah. fun i love that stuff i love like i have to rewatch journey to the center of the earth i was yeah. i was searching for hollow earth conspiracy theorists and I just yeah. can't, I guess it was all like deleted in the name of misinformation, but I want, <laughs> I want more of that. I want, I want to, exactly. I want to read more of that. Cause that's, it's that's kind of, that's a cool, yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's yeah, like, like, I, I was, I was going to make, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I was, I was going to do something more like, um, uh, like modern fantasy. And I was just thinking like, well, if you're going to set up a modern fantasy world and you want to have a lot of the elements of the already existing world, how do you fit more fantasy into modern hollow you make the earth hollow like you know and you yeah. have people go down on adventures yeah. um so i wanted to look into that and i just couldn't find like you know it's such a fun idea like all these really um it seems like now with conspiracies you're allowed to it's like okay bigfoot's cool uh ufos are always cool you can always get into spacemen but there's all these other things that you're not allowed to look at because they're dangerous and it's like yeah. Okay, well, this isn't fun. Like people get real upset we, about flat Earth. I don't know. I I don't understand. Well, flat Earth, yeah, exactly. Like flat Earth is like such a fun idea, mm -hmm. and also like as an artist or as a creative person, like bending your brain a little bit is good for you because it, the the yeah. fairies come and they go, hey, let's like give this a massage a little bit. Let's like squeeze all these things that you like. Let's like squeeze all this stuff out. Put some new stuff in here that's like totally weird. And yeah. then you're like, oh yeah, I can like you can tap into that creatively in some kind of way. Like it's actually yeah. helpful would you, for other Would stuff. you be worried about making a story that has, with a, setting it in a world with a flat earth? Because I, uh, I kind of would be, I, I would feel like people would be upset with me or something. Like I, I, I'm doing a book called Age of Iker and it's a wordless okay. comic, which just sounds like pretentious art torture, but um, it's a wordless comic and it's totally like all the stuff 
it's all the things that hmm. you're not allowed to <laughs> and it's in a wordless comic and kind of done like a mythological type thing so Interesting. Um, it's a way for me to like play with all those ideas did you did you write it yourself it sounds funny yeah, to but, ask, but yeah i mean it's 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 uh i'm not a writer hmm. but um because uh, i i have tried to write and i hmm. just know what my limitations are but um i feel hmm. like i've i've got this thing in me that i can get out and it's not necessarily um i mean it's a narrative kind of but it does do that jormungandr thing where it loops upon itself where you can start anywhere in the book even and it'll loop oh, from beginning okay. to end. it's kind of a I, it's a odd it's an odd sort of thing it's a, I, it's it is a little arty but, i can um, i can yeah. appreciate your outlook by the way like um because writing is one of those things where you can't quite tell like it's not like art where you can tell how bad you are like if you see me draw like it's it's bad and everyone knows it's bad but with writing okay. a lot there's a lot of people that don't understand that they're like not they're not good at it not that i feel like people should be limited or not try to get good at things but like you know like uh i my i my dad has like a soap company thing i guess now i'm part of it but his his original partner wrote this like blurbs for the website that were like absolutely horrific that you could not read through and i would read them right. out loud to try and explain that it doesn't make sense because there were sentences that just didn't connect to anything and yeah. it's just like you know my my dad would try to like philosophize about what the line could mean and say it's fine and it's like <laughs> no 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 it has to you have to understand it when you read it that's you know so but there's a lot yeah. of people who think they're good at writing that aren't good at it because it's a blob of words no matter what whereas like with yeah. drawing it's like well it doesn't look like a tree does it so it's like it's a little more yeah. objective yeah right yeah. i i totally agree writing is one of those things that um anyone can say that they're a writer and right. it's like well where's like a where's your books usually there there's mm -hmm. nothing there mm -hmm. uh there's always this eternal book that they're working on forever everyone, um, everyone's half finished novel like what yeah yeah exactly and um I, I do think it's great for everybody to try to write. And mm -hmm. I think it's great that everybody yeah. at some point tries to write a book, even if it's terrible. Yeah. It's a great creative exercise. And I think, I think it's, like, yeah, I think it's good for people to try and get good at stuff. You know, it's, it's really important. The problem is like when people think that they're already good at stuff, they, they can't get good at it. You know, you can't learn yeah. unless you oh, can like, you have perspective. Yeah. So I like, think like three quarters of the population in Iceland writes a book at some point in their life. Huh. And, um, but I highly doubt that all those people are walking around saying that they're writers. That's the thing. Mm. Um, you know, they're just some people who had a story to tell and, uh, or wanted to share their, their, That's really their cool, life. Actually. I didn't know that. It's super cool. And um, like the thing with writing, it's kind of, it's, I think it's a symptom of like people who watch a lot of movies and uh, they think that they be directors because mm. it's like, I, well, I have good taste in movies. So obviously I should be a film director. It's like, you have no idea how hard that is. You know, it's like, <laughs> There's so many things like I guess it's like there's a there's a chunk of YouTube. I don't want to say it's the Lindy Beige side, but it's Lindy Beige adjacent. Mm. That's sort of into just like ripping into everything. And mm. part of me is like, I do kind of get my back up a bit or at least like I don't not my not get my back up, but I wince a little bit because I can tell that these people have never worked on a thing. And mm. it's very mm. easy to like sit back and point a finger at something like a movie. Yeah. uh what how bad it is um when it's like sometimes it's actually just really hard to make something good you know yeah, yeah. and sometimes there's like you'll you'll have something like um uh it, like it could have been great but there's a certain line producer involved who somehow yeah. sabotages a lot of good decisions and there's this kind of stuff like it, it's it's hard or like a game it's like well yeah. these movements of this uh this warrior holding this item should be different because don't you know historically that when you move, hold a sword like this, mm. it's actually like this, you idiots. And it's like, yeah. uh, we're dealing with polygons and rigging models. Uh, you, yeah. If you've ever worked on a game, you would know how difficult it is to rig stuff. Yeah. And Skyrim, when they're, swatching, when they're uh, swapping out weapons, that's unbelievably complicated. And there's a right. reason why there's limited movement in that because yeah. it's a limitation of the technology. And it's not that everybody's uh, stupid, you know, I, it's, it's that kind of thing. So I also think that sometimes when people are criticizing stuff, they elevate their own, like they, they elevate their own perspective of their own intelligence. Cause like, yeah, you know, like I, uh, in, in, um, uh, Slayer in the wide Valley, my, my new book, 
uh, he, the, the character switches from using a spear to using a sword, and there's a couple of reasons for it. But I wanted to ask uh, people uh, who who like did like LARPing or whatever, uh, yeah. their experiences with like swords versus spears in a forest. And then there was like all these people that were replying to me that seemed to not understand what the woods were like. <laughs> Like they were like, well, you only need a. It's there's no reason to switch to a sword because the, you only need a meter of free space behind you to use a spear. And I was like, a meter? That's like that's three feet. Like, have you ever seen the trees, dude? Like, there's so many. <laughs> like, yeah. like in a in a forest, there's no room, you know. And then like I sent a picture. I posted a picture of the woods that I was thinking of because I don't know what they're thinking of. And then um, they were like, oh, there's room right there. And I was like, well, that's a, that's the path that I was on because I couldn't walk through literal like brush. And then they yeah. sent a picture of like the woods, but there were no leaves on the ground. So I was like, they're like, this is deep in the German forest. And I was like, he's definitely not deep in the German forest. Cause there's no leaves. Like what happened to the leaves? Did the fairy come and rake them? Like what okay. happened? Like this is a manicured like setting, yeah. so, but like everyone was so they were, they were so confident to the point that one person said swords are hilariously impractical weapons. And it's like, hilarious like you know how people get stabbed all... with knives right and that's a longer knife like essentially the lang messer yeah. is like long knife right this is like yeah you know and i guess um yeah what why would they have all these impractical weapons all throughout history then i mean i do think statistically more people probably died by spear than mm -hmm. sword yeah yeah because it go it's a more ancient tool but um there's a reason why yeah. swords can like down. yeah and a lot of footmen use spears and stuff but it's like I don't yeah. know. You know, it's like, I think there's a, certain, yeah. there's a certain armchair thing too of like, mm -hmm. it's kind of like UFC. Like you've got people that, um, that like, well, I would have done this. It's like, they see some <laughs> fight that's over in like 30 seconds and some guys tied up and like, you know, his last brain cell just left. And it, it's just like, you know, bloodied and beaten up and all that. And it's like, well, I would have done this or that or whatever. And it's like, you've never been in a fight. Like this is <laughs> a, like, actual violence is terrifying and scary and really yeah. fast over really quick and there's not like it's not princess by choreography yeah. and you know and, and it's the yeah. kind of thing like so what is accurate like the whole um i want to say like autistic levels but that's probably not the right <laughs> thing to say. but you know what i mean no it's that's like, exactly yeah no that's yeah. that's exactly the vernacular that i'm familiar with <laughs> yeah and i think it's actually i think a lot of it is honestly that i think there's a lot of people that are at that level uh, um i i will at say that. though like you know watching movies with swords um kind of made me feel like uh like warriors were not cool because swords aren't sharp in movies they never cut anyone same thing guns never hit anyone guns didn't hit people until i saw like pan's labyrinth or maybe like john wick or something people just don't get shot so guns are terrible right people have this idea right. that like you know they just don't work and uh and like you know and but then i saw like the the trailer for the original dragon age dragon age origins where the guy has the shield and sword and he's like cutting up those orcs and i just thought like man you know what i was wrong like swords are cool when they cut people when they actually work and so <laughs> like you know that was that was part of like i was thinking about that feeling uh when i i wanted to put a uh, hark on into the comic the, the martial character is just using a sword no magic mm -hmm. and i just thought that's like you know if you make sword sharp it, it he doesn't need it, spells to be cool and right so, yeah i don't I know. know i've always been uh partial to the um like no shield just a sword mm -hmm. rogue type character oh just rogues maybe. okay Maybe it's the swashbuckler type mm -hmm. character who's just like oh dexterity cool uh, fighter kind of thing. Yeah, okay. that, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I I kind of gravitate towards that. Just the guy who's like so cool he doesn't need a shield. Rapiers you know, and of... and cutlasses and uh... yeah. Even though it's totally impractical and it would make sense to have a gigantic tower shield or something. Depends on your deck just... set, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just no one's going to see your puffy shirt if you've got a big tower shield. Yeah, yeah. So no, no shields. Yeah, it's no good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the thing, too. Some stuff is there just because it looks cool. You know, yeah. like there's a reason why if you have the hero with a story, they're not going to be wearing a helmet that obscures their face. Yeah. Because you want to see the hero. You don't want to see just a helmet. 
You I know? don't know though. I think I think that comes from like Hollywood actors needing a certain amount of face time in their contract because like helmets look really cool. Like you know, like like a bucket helmet, like the Crusader great helm. That's like that's a cool helmet. You know, if you just I guess it, if, I if mean, the people watch the Mandalorian, it, right? Well, look at Darth Vader. Darth Vader's mm-hmm. nothing but a helmet, and it's cool. Mm-hmm. So the helmet could be a character. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of a bad example like that movie that came out recently with uh, Matt Damon. It was so many. Oh, they thing. cut the half of the helmet. <laughs> yeah, like there's yeah. a thing where it's like, hey, we'll do both. It's like, no, this just looks weird. Like this is. Couldn't cool. you? Couldn't it be such a tool though? Because like, if you have a really cool looking helmet in all the fight scenes, you are that cool guy in the fight scenes, and then you want to go talk to the girl. You take the helmet off, and suddenly, and you like, you know, it's totally you. You can very visually show that he's like different now. You can show the right. like duality of a character. I just, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's no, just no. they want the there's just a certain amount of money in having Matt Damon's face out, so they're like cut half yeah. the helmet off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and it's it's I think of like say for comics and stuff too. It's like, um, like say with the Hannibal thing, it's like, okay, nobody's gonna know who this person is barking orders mm-hmm. if they're mm-hmm. if they're if they're not distinguished. In, like if mm-hmm. there's a character that's like giving an order and you need to know who they kind of are for it to make sense. If, he, if they're not distinguishable in some kind of way, who's going to know what the, mm-hmm. who that is? You know, it's that kind of thing. So sometimes it's just a, a matter of, uh, you know, the visual language, like the physical, the visual storytelling of a thing, you know? Whereas if you're writing a novel, you can just say the person's name, you know? Mm-hmm. You can just say, yeah. so-and-so yeah. said blank. But it's like, well, no, you don't have that luxury. You have to show that it's that person. And now you're in this this thing where it's like you've got to take realism and kind of put it over here a little bit and you know do what works for the story for the reader i guess it's like it's striking a balance like you don't want to insult the intelligence of the viewer or the reader or whatever mm-hmm. but you also don't want to um like you don't want to lose anybody and you want to tell a, an mm-hmm. interesting story but yeah there's there's like a it's a tricky balance yeah there's realism and then there's like kind of you know, you, you shift stuff just so it makes sense to people. Cause some stuff people just like don't generally know. And like, you could spend some time like introducing them to certain concepts, but other stuff is just worth, it's just not worth like, uh, you know, especially, I guess maybe in an, in, in novels it's different, but in, in like short stories, there's a couple times where like, I knew something wasn't quite accurate, but I was just like, well, this is like kind of, I'm telling a story, not telling, not informing people. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's like introducing the name of a character once and then never again and just assuming that you're going to remember that guy. It's like, well, no, like maybe you don't have to like, yeah. like you're expecting a lot out of the reader. And it's sort of, there's this kind of a thing where it's like, well, get on my level. I shouldn't have to tell you twice, but it's also like, come on, like be fair, you know, be fair to the audience that sometimes you're tired when you're reading, <laughs> you know, that kind of or, thing. Yeah, when people only yeah. describe a character like one time in a whole book, it's like, uh, you know. Yeah. People, yeah. people forget or, you know, they, maybe they, they were skimming sometimes. So, you know. yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. I right, so I have a, yeah. I have a philosophical question for you, I guess. Uh-oh. Um, all right. So yeah, it's uh, totally flat. Yeah. Go on. Uh, <laughs> if, if, uh, if you could ask yourself any one question and get a truthful answer back and you'd know it was the truth, what would you ask? If I could ask myself an honest, you could ask yourself any question and get an honest answer, and you knew it was the truth. For myself, yeah. Like so, if I could ask myself something and know that I wouldn't lie mm-hmm. to myself, yeah. So, do you mean that I like? Okay, wait. I guess, I guess an example but is I like, already, but I would already know the answer, would I not? Unless maybe. I unless I've what if you asked yourself, "Am I happy?" Or like, what if you ask yourself, like, what do I want to do with my life? Oh, okay. Uh, And do I, okay, do I already have this answer, but I'm afraid to admit it? I guess guess so, yeah. I guess potentially. Uh, I don't really think happiness exists. Uh, I think that's, (laughs) but I think that's just because I'm I'm German. Boo. (laughs) I, I don't doomer garbage over here <laughs> well but i i think it's the uh the pursuit of of, of happiness is kind of a goofy goal mm-hmm. um i think that you can just enjoy like you know enjoy life without because i think if you're trying to be happy like are you happy it's a temporary state right that you experience 
temporarily and you kind of move in and out of it and you yeah. try to keep yourself there but you also know that like a lot of the day is not like filled with glee it's yeah, just but like you could have a you have a happy life like as like um so if your door frame just has like a like a an iron bar is just hanging from a string and every day you occasionally bonk your head into the string i mean yeah. you're not constantly cracked in the head but you know you're probably your your the your forehead is going to be less red if you just got rid of the iron bar hanging from a string right so like yeah that's something like so happiness my, if you like put my, in things that, answer, yeah yeah my my answer to that question would be uh will i succeed in removing all of those things that hang and bonk me in the head mm. will i succeed in removing them from my life mm. as i progress through it because i guess that in a sense is the like as far as finding meaning in a sense it's that or for the the road to happiness is that mm. removing obstacles on your own terms in a way mm. that kind of thing i don't want to say clean your room but it really is a big deal <laughs> I was thinking that. about I was thinking about that. It's so lame, but but it really is like I can I clean my I room is the, the question you're asking. Yeah, yeah, like will will I succeed in cleaning my room? Uh, but it is pretty clean. Some people, I, I yeah, that. some people get real upset about Jordan Peterson, but like the clean your room thing is is like an interesting because like your your life is you living every day. So like if you make your life better, you know. Yeah. Bit by bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think that's like um, it's, it's like no it, different. For guys like Tony Robbins or Tony Rob yeah Tony Robbins is that the guy he's like a self-help guru um he has uh, gigantic hands um anyway <laughs> look, look him up he's, he's kind of he's like he's a cool guy in a way he's a little it's a little corny too but um he has this whole thing where it's like you have to be improving every part of your life mm. otherwise mm. you're like either it, you're improving it or it's sliding so mm. like mm. all your relationships you have to be improving like you're all your interpersonal relationships you need to work at and make better all the time. Otherwise they're receding. And it, and I, I totally subscribe to this. Like if you're not improving artistically or creatively, you're going to recede. Yeah, I think that's true. You, yeah. But... And, and that should go with like um, your body uh, and your mind. Like, you know, if you can consume something that's worthwhile, you probably should rather than something that's just nonsense. Yes. You know, um, yeah. you know, if you can, if you can exercise instead of watching TV, you probably should, unless it's really good, you but you probably, both, right? maybe you can do both. Yeah. yeah. It's that sort of thing. Like you should probably find a way to improve or like, at least that's my kick. I find that with art, if you start to slow down or if you start to like huff your own farts and mm. think that you're really good, like it, it's, you're not yeah. because like everybody, there's so many other people out there that are like, there's 15 year olds that are just like, that could yeah. eat my lunch, you know, like that are just crushing yeah. it. And yeah. I love it. I love that there's like, I, I love it. I love that energy yeah. that there's all this. If you, if you go either stuff. way, you have a problem. Cause if you think that you're terrible, you don't like, uh, you, you, you lose your motivation. Yeah. Yeah. It's like either way is you have to find like a nice. And know, that's what I want. I want the motivation fairy. <laughs> Cause I, <laughs> I, I, um, well, I, I I print out all the drafts that I want to like read over and mark up, and I keep them. I keep them in a box, so I have a big right. box stuffed with a ton of paper. So I have like a proof to myself that I have gotten things done, is in the yeah. box because I'll beat myself up too much about being productive. It's like you gotta you have to be honest with yourself, like how productive you actually are, because if you're always doomer about like how productive you are it's you're not they also yeah. recommend that with like to-do lists to always have like a list and have show that you crossed things off mm -hmm. to feel like you did something yeah you know? yeah and it, and it's really um man it, it's like i i really think that so much of this is about um just showing up it's like it's like going to the gym like nobody really wants to go to the gym but then when you get there and you leave, you're like, holy cow, I feel mm. so good that I did that. It's like this mini victory, like you outgamed yourself. And it's like kind of the gamification of your life a little bit. Like mm. you, you don't want to do it, but when you do do it, you feel like you like slayed a dragon a little bit. And if you just keep doing that every day, you're like, okay, it is the clean the room thing. Because it's like, if I can slay these things, then there's other things that I can do as well. And you can just kind of up the game a little bit. And I think 
artistically or whatever it is, creatively, whatever, whatever it is that you want to do, if you just show up and put yourself in that state of like, this is what I'm supposed to do. And if I have a dud day where I, I, sh I wish I got all this stuff done, but I just stared into the abyss, like you still showed up, you know, mm -hmm. and if you didn't show up, you wouldn't get anything done. So right. I think if you treat yourself like you're professional, mm -hmm. uh, you'll become professional. Like yeah. I, I have a dedicated studio that I, I work in because I live in the middle of nowhere. I can luckily have a studio outside of my house. And um, so I get up every day like it's a bl it's literally a blizzard outside. It's totally a snow day. But like I, I'm up at like super early in the morning and I'm at work and I'm like at my drawing table right. and there's no there's nobody here to please. And like. I'm here until my, like for 12 hours, mm. you know, mm. and it's like, and there's a lot of days where That's I cool. don't get that much done and I wish I got more done, but I, it's so much is just like showing up, you know, it's mm. like having a dedicated sacred space where that's the thing too, a dedicated space. That's like yours where mm. you do a thing like a sacred, sacred space where the fairies can come, mm. man, <laughs> this book. Okay. Have you okay, cheesy again? Have you read, um, this it's uh it's called the creative act a way of being uh by, no, I, I, by rick rubin i think did you, did you recommend that to me earlier in the conversation uh i think i recommended uh stephen pressfield the war of art okay but i also recommend this it's um he's a record producer who's worked with basically everybody okay. i've got a video on my youtube channel about it and um it's just it's again it's one of those books that you can just like have sitting there open up and flip to any random page and it'll get you like it'll get the juices flowing mm -hmm. and his whole thing is kind of about being let's go back to fairies it's about creating the environment where fairies want to hang out okay like create a, yeah. like the fairies are totally welcome to come hang out yeah. here right? okay. so i i do get the the ritual nature of like uh being productive is like if you do a couple things and then you're productive like you can kind of set yourself up with a certain um atmosphere that does get stuff done but it to me it's still very um nebulous i guess is the word for it like i don't like it, creativity i can turn on productivity yeah. i have to like follow these steps like a ritual and then and then have it happen you know yeah yeah so. i i think um yeah i think a lot of it is like it's this uh it's the physicality thing too like uh, it's not that I'm in crazy shape or like some gym bro or whatever it is, but I honestly feel like if I don't keep exercising, mm -hmm. I can't draw anymore. No, <laughs> I, I get that. that. Yeah. It's a weird thing because it's like the blood isn't flowing, mm -hmm. stuff isn't moving, and I don't feel that energy. So it's just weird things like that. Like, I wish I would have known this earlier, but mm. it's it's that kind of stuff. I don't know what. I'm sure it's different for everybody, but I think everybody everybody knows, and then that some people just like don't believe it. You know, like yeah. like every, everybody knows, you're, like exercise helps you think, and you just you know, yeah. Even and me, I, I haven't I was... exercised in like a week, and it's like I'm just stupid. Like I I, I know it works. I just you know, you can feel your brain shutting down. Yeah, I'm just, I, I I'm think just outside gratification is a horrible motivator. <laughs> like um, likes or thinking that you'll get some sort of special thing from mm. somebody at some point. Like, I think maybe the best way to write or create stuff is thinking that nobody's ever going to care. Mm. Uh, in a way, like you still want to get good and you still want to like improve and, and like all that kind of stuff. But if you think that like nobody's going to care, but in 200 years when you're reincarnated and, and you pick a body and you come back and you, and you, you're going to pick up your book. And it's going to be really crazy because you're going to pick up that that book that you wrote 200 years ago. That's how you should look at stuff in a okay. way. I feel like, I feel like it's way healthier. It's a just totally disconnect from the modern uh, zeitgeist of things for rewards. Because I've, I've heard people say that in a different way. It's like do it for yourself, like create for yourself, mm. <laughs> yeah. rather than create for yourself. But 200 years when you're reincarnated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because then you're not in this time. Okay. Then you're not stuck to this I, time. I, 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 I do, I, I do think about that when I'm writing. Is like, I, I'll, I'll sometimes get to a point where I'm like, oh, will someone be upset with this now? And then I'm like, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna write something that's objectively good, you know, outside of this, yeah. uh, this time period. You know, because if you're 
Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, if you try hard enough, you can be offended by anything. <laughs> like, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and if you if you write thinking about the time that you're in, then you're not mm -hmm. gonna make something timeless, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the only stuff that really matters. Yeah, and so it removes the motivation. So it's kind of like, well, what am I writing for? If it's not for me, and if it's if it's not for the people around me, it's for this other thing that's way out there that mm -hmm. I'm not even. I don't even know who this is for. Yeah. I think that somehow in there you'll find a more uh, a more honest thing that that's closer to uh, it's it, you, you distill something special in there because you're not going to be influenced from the stuff that's all around you. And I guess that's why earlier I was trying to say something about like uh, removing the fairy that influences me or something. You know, like disconnect from the from the modern thing because I look at stuff and I go, oh man, that's so cool. And then I want to draw like that. Mm. And it's like, uh, you know, it's tough to like shake that stuff off because you're, you're detaching from who you really are, mm. which you don't really know who that is anyway. I mean, I don't know. This is like rabbit holey, but uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 If that so. makes any sense. Like uh, na nowadays, nerdy people can, can find themselves like quite depressed with like all of the like desecration of their favorite, like, you know, uh, uh, fandoms and whatever. Like Star Wars has had it rough. I, I I always thought Star Wars was cool, but I was I'm not I'm not in it enough to feel the pain. But I <laughs> I could I could see people suffering. Uh, you know, Lord of the Rings and stuff. Um, so it, it, what I guess uh, is so so what, what I what I like is um, to uh, to escape from the uh, the crushing f uh, despair is. I like to watch someone's take who's uh, sane, like yourself, and then like uh, you you have a nice way of putting like a positive spin on it. Like you you looked at like the rings of power, and then you were like, well, why don't you look at this other thing? It's better. Forget this. Yeah. Um, what yeah. would be, I guess, your advice for people trying to stay sane and like fight off the crush of uh, depression of like all this stuff, all this like woke whatever, like. Uh, yeah, I guess with like, I, I started thinking about with the Silverwing thing that there's going to be a lot of young people who are going to find mm -hmm. my channel inevitably. And so I didn't want to be a doom mm -hmm. merchant that's <laughs> kind of complaining about stuff. I would rather just say, look, this isn't for me, but if you are interested in this, here's some ideas. Yeah, I don't want to be a doom, doom and gloomer, I mm -hmm. guess. And there's other people who are uh, way funnier and way more witty than me who do it better anyway. So, yeah. uh, what I would do is if, like, I'm a big Star Wars fan, Lord of the Rings, all that kind of stuff. I've seen them basically ruin it. But in a way, they haven't because the original movies are still there. Yeah. And I almost look at a lot of this stuff, like, um, like I love The Witcher. Mm. And, like, I like the books. I like the, uh, the yeah. game. I didn't really like the series very much. I thought it was okay, but eh. it was just eh. But I could care less whether or not that series exists mm. at all. And I look at what they're Same. doing to a lot of stuff, and I just, I just try, like, I just don't care, I guess. It's not even I try not to care. It's like I just don't care because there's so many great things out there that you have yet to find. And if, like, if you think Star Wars is cool and if you think The Witcher is cool, um, oh my God, there's this movie called Marquita Lavarosa. I'm pronouncing it totally wrong. It's an old like movie that was, it's from the Czech Republic. It's from like the fifties. Go watch that. And okay. it's like, it's like, go find stuff out there. Like yeah. there's so much great work out there that you have yet to discover that is amazing. Mm. And so as soon as you feel like there's something that's being like ruined of yours, just remember that there's all this other stuff that you have yet to find and it's way better <laughs> you know <laughs> it's of a much higher quality like i could just care less about like i love um todd mcfarland spider-man yeah. um and i liked it, I, that into the spider-verse movie too i thought that was pretty cool like art wise but um i could really care less what they do what some corporate blob does right. with these characters like i haven't like I worked on um, Avengers Assemble, like the cartoon doing mm -hmm. storyboards and stuff. I haven't was, watched a single. I haven't watched a single it episode. Was, it was decent. The, the first season was was okay. I, I remember watching some of that. 
like I loved working on it. It was a super fun job. That's the one I with the uh, with Graviton as the boss at the, the end of the season one. Is that maybe? I, I know that I, I worked on. <laughs> I know that I worked on an episode with Ultron and uh, Legion of Evil. I think they're called. Okay. Uh, Baron Zemo, I think, is in it. Who I thought was pretty cool. Um, anyway, I, yeah, it's. It, I don't even know what season I worked on, but uh, it was a fun job. But I have like no emotional attachment to like whatever Marvel, Disney, whatever's gonna do with stuff. Like I love Little Mermaid. The new one looks weird to me. It just mm -hmm. and it's yeah. not it's not what people think it is. It's just it doesn't have any of the magic. Like no fairies were involved in making the new Little Mermaid <laughs> or the new Beauty and the Beast. Absolutely no creativity None. fairies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no creativity fairies. When you look at the old the older stuff, you're like, this has so much uh, life. Yeah. and love in it that is so gone from a lot of modern work that um i think that's what's depressing is you're consuming stuff that doesn't have love in it hmm. and there's so much of it out there you just have to go back and grab it and yeah. it can fuel you so yeah don't get bummed out by people wrecking your dumb stuff it's probably dumb <laughs> <laughs> you know? it's probably dumb and nobody's also like like oh can you believe what they're doing with um like the witcher or something like this it's like well not really like it doesn't surprise me because it's so like dead stuff, into it i guess <laughs> yeah it's like they're, they're the game is still there i still love the game yeah. i got all the books. they're I think, good i think it's fair to be upset about it but yeah like i i think it's i think it i, I think people should be upset when they when they mess with an ip that they you know they like desecrate an ip but at the yeah. same time to let it um depress you i guess isn't like to let it to let it have to a let lasting it effect on you yeah. yeah people should be pissed and should like be against it but i think to let it like seep into you like uh yeah. to, to affect you afterwards is like uh you know because like you said there's so much stuff you can you know there's so much stuff out there and i i mean do i want there to be a really good uh warhammer series or something yeah. um yeah of course i do that'd be great um but if if it got weird would it bother me I, whatever there's i i like the books mm -hmm. but i think there's if you if you let pop culture become your identity you're in trouble mm -hmm. like if if part of your who you are as a person and i think a lot of like nerdy people myself included um it gets into that thing where you're sort of this like Frankenstein monster of all the things that you like. Mm. It's like, here's all my bands, here's all my books, here's all my comics and my art and my movies and all this stuff. And then you assemble this creature together and it's like, there's me. And then it's this weird thing of like, it's not who you are. It's what you consume this sort mm. of odd space. And I think if you identify less with uh, that, you know, you're not the stuff that you consume. Like you're not the TV shows that you watch. It sounds so cheesy. It sounds like some kind of '90s motivational, like, like some a line at a Fight Club or something. But it's kind of true. It's like I think a lot of people um, really get like hyper absorbed in this yeah. stuff, and it becomes part of their identity. And I think part of the YouTube world. Um, yes, I enjoy hearing people trash Rings of Power totally, and. But at the same time, I just think like, man, I just don't have the energy to do that mm. because I want to make stuff yeah. and I don't want to, I don't want to feed that. I don't want to get covered in that stink all the time when I'm trying to make stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know? No, I so, agree. I, I avoid all this, like all the stuff that I assume is going to be horrible. I, I just avoid it. I know a lot of people, like my favorite saying these days is like people eating shit and being thankful. It's not diarrhea you know oh totally it's yeah. like you know and then they're like oh it wasn't that bad and it's like yeah, well yeah. you know you're saying from the outset it's bad but you're like well it wasn't that bad it's like yeah. i hear so many yeah. people say that about like current movies it's like well that's not really a glowing recommendation saying that yeah. it wasn't that bad there's so much yeah. like there's so much there's good TV stuff out there so like much. the yeah. the old like the the new est the newest dread uh adaptation like the the Carl the Urban movie. Dread movie, yeah. Oh, it's great. I yeah, love it. Yeah, it's like it's like super good. And there's people that haven't seen it, you know? It's like yeah. and I like, I like the old one too. Like I thought yeah. the old I think the old one's hilarious. It like, was, I, I, yeah. It's very oh, yeah. different. The law. Like, yeah. I mean it's it's a goofy kind of thing, but I like I like them both for their in their own way. And and there's that too. Like I think that people get so um 
like there's a lot of stuff that's just blatantly kind of in your face um spite almost it's yeah. like the, the one of these remakes it feels like it's almost spiteful which it is, is just yeah. <laughs> you know it's, it's it's so obvious but um yeah. sometimes there's just a spin on something and it's interesting to see the spin um mm. the spin now is spite which i can't mm. imagine that this can continue much longer but uh yeah there's a lot of good stuff like even um like with tv you have so many people recommending stuff and there's only so many hours in the day it's like i'll watch one episode maybe mm. and then if i'm not kind of really blown away i'm not going to continue because right. like time you know but um raised by wolves uh i really liked and it got canceled which stinks mm. i don't know if you've seen that it's a really um it's a bit of like a high concept out there sci-fi thing. I can mm. see a lot of people not liking it because uh, it's a little weird, but I loved it. I thought it was super cool. Um, I think it was on HBO or something or uh, The White Lotus is really good. Uh, really good characterization, I think, in White Lotus, which is think, yeah, those are two series that I would recommend that are that are new or just go back and watch Battlestar. I remember Battlestar Galactica being awesome. I still hope it is, but uh, yeah. A lot of people haven't seen it. I don't know. Maybe it's really cheesy, but uh, yeah, I don't know. There's there's so much good stuff that it's like okay, Rings of Power sucks. Whatever, I'll go yeah. watch. White still Lotus still read the books or the the trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, so. Really, the best weapon be... you have against all the shitty stuff is just just keep on recommending good stuff to like yeah. out outweigh all the bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like I thought about doing uh, reaction videos. Like I don't know, coming like because of youtube school it's like what can i do hey ai give me ideas you know the ai fairy is great by the way that's fascinating but um anyway it's like i could just do reaction videos to like awful trailers and then just not react just like have the trailer going over here and then just totally talk about other stuff but then that'd be like completely clickbaiting at the same time yeah but, yeah it's hard not to want to trash stuff like when yeah. you see some of this stuff it's like oh my god this is it's so bad also like why is cg getting like so much worse over time like it, it the miss marvel stuff or whatever that movie's called uh marvels the marvels yeah yeah like that that's who's it for well, because like, it, like they're just busting out like so much content that they can't possibly like afford all at once and so they're like adding all this crunch time to the animators and i mean there's yeah and there's also like the whole thing like a lot of these the like the budweiser thing and like the like everything marvel does it's not really about making money from sales you know no it's about yeah. like you know social engineering yeah it's like yeah. getting money from someplace else you know <laughs> like investors yeah. maybe yeah i mean in one way you want to say like like as as they atomize culture more and more and mm. hammer people and and fracture everything uh I, I also think it's like, you know, you want to say like, you're not alone. You're not crazy. Yeah. Right. For sure. You're not crazy. And by the way, the antidote to this is actually to make your own stuff. Yeah. So like, it's kind of that thing where I want to get, I mean, hopefully like maybe long-term goals or something is to get, like, I, I can't do an educational channel. I'm not that guy, but I'm hoping that I can just motivate people to like pursue something creatively, maybe at some point to you know whatever you that is. Me. I mean it could, well there you go great that like that that yeah. seriously makes my day yeah. like that makes my day like that that's what I hope I hope that like somebody's like I can draw better than this guy this guy sucks <laughs> it's like great go do it like go do it please do and uh I, I kind of want that I want people to like uh combat oh my god I combat darkness with light that's like something Brandon Sanderson would say because he's that you can say it team. But uh, it's that kind of thing, like a, a positive um, yeah. takeaway, I guess. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, the thing is, is that the the darker stuff, I guess, um, is more interesting in a lot of ways too, because it's yeah. a darker rabbit yeah. hole that's a lot more fun to go down. I, yeah, but I think it, it's, it's, to... humans are good problem solvers because we focus on negativity. You know, like the negative yeah. stuff is like. You know, like, I think like Elon Musk was in like an interview recently talking about it. And he was like, well, it's if you didn't remember that a tiger was over there, you would die. But if but like all the um, so we're here from people that remembered about the tiger. But um, like all of those problems were like kind of 
localized and could disappear and it's like short term but then now we've introduced ourselves to like long term things that aren't going away so it's like right it was like it's like an instinct for a less complicated person you know so it's yeah like, yeah that's interesting yeah. They always say, don't it? stress out over things that you can't control. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, it, because it's a parasite, <laughs> it, um, the parasitic nature of it, of, of that thing, is that it, you have to feed it. Mm -hmm. And I honestly think that there's some kind of voodoo going on where it eats, it eats hatred and it eats mm -hmm. uh it eats your negativity it's like yeah. it's the skeptic thing you know like it's feeding off the energy and and you um i'm not saying you but like if you yeah. uh if you feed the beast it only grows and i honestly think at this point that part of the marketing thing is to cause outrage just because they're purely measuring whether or not people talk about it. Mm. So is the Little Mermaid stuff successful? Well, yes, because people talked about it and it got engagement for something people normally wouldn't have talked about. Right. So they fuel it. And I think if you starve it and you redirect that energy towards indie comics, like your Kickstarter, <laughs> go by. I think also being actively dismissive is nice too. Yeah. Like when people like mention it only to be like, yeah, you know. If only people were yeah. as passionate about like loving indie stuff or, or good stuff mm. as they were about hating like super bad trashy stuff, there'd be exactly like a it. huge shift. I try to make That's a rule for myself: if I write a bad review, I need to find something else that like I write a good review for. And keep it balanced. <laughs> because you know, if I'm letting myself focus on the negativity, I should be balancing it with like stuff I really really like. So I, I yeah. try to, you know. And the thing is, it, it is more fun to crap on stuff. Yeah. It's just more fun. Like it's way easier. It's it's funnier. You laugh more. You know, it's way more fun to crap on something and 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 goof on it. And as a as a viewer, it's fun watching those channels because you, you laugh along. And instead of like being upset about something, you're now laughing about something. Yeah. And it's it's a great like therapy kind of thing. But at the same time, it's like you've got all these people who are like, hey, I make I actually make stuff. Right. Can maybe yeah. we talk about this? And it's one of these things where it's like you've got all these um, like there's so many channels that talk about like pop culture and, and all this stuff. And it would just be great if like they'd spend this much more time talking about people doing Kickstarters and indie stuff and that kind of thing yeah. and getting excited about that, like you said. So, yeah, yeah I'm with you. Right, right. For sure. Yeah. Wow. We'll probably wrap it up here, yeah. but okay. um, any promotions that you'd like to just shout out? Mm -hmm. I guess uh, Silverwing coming out in September. Yeah, Silverwing is coming out in September. That's really cool. It's all ages. It's a uh, good YA, but for adults too. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, yeah, and I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, which, if you look yes. me up, awesome, you'll... awesome YouTube channel. We yeah. both watch so. Uh, yeah well thank you very much yeah this has been great thank you very much for, definitely uh, for having me. thank you it's been a very great conversation